artificial intelligence, is, uh, as the name suggests, is uh, intelligence uh, arising from the use of machines, smart machines, uh, computers, to do what, what human beings would otherwise be doing. We need to have data. We need to begin to know the importance of keeping data. And uh, uh, AI and through data analytics and machine learning will analyze this data and come up and aid decision-making process. People who have not uh, invested in training to migrate from the traditional way of doing things will lose their jobs. As works are being lost, there are new jobs being created. So as you are moving from, let's say, the amazing stage, you can learn something new that has to do with AI, so let's say 3D printing. Showing on March 3, 2023 on Ghana Web TV. Now, <laughs> 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 And now US, I am something, I get instant charges, pain, I still wait in this way, I get unbeatable. We should be promo code, Dr. Like, then you have 10 pounds, 10 dollars, and now 10 Canadian dollars. The first transaction, you can send this guy a coffee, you know, download the Lemonade Finance. I'm going to be using and they are taking us to how how to ride a bike so this is my new friend what's your name this I'm called Matthias Matthias okay. okay this is your break this is my break yes please okay your accelerator accelerator all right okay the back brake over here that's a back brake yes please. okay this is a gear okay you have to forward neutral reverse okay now it's on neutral okay just push it like this forward Okay. Then you are slowly a little bit to move your bike. Okay. Are you okay now? So yeah, he has taken me through everything. I'm about to move the bike. This is my second time doing quad biking here in Ghana. So let's go guys. Slowly. Now please let your hand be on the brakes, okay?
problem. So they are helping him fix it. And then mine, I'm always the first, you know? <laughs> they are not coming back. <laughs> so guys, yeah, this brings us to the end of this vlog. Come, come, come. So guys, this brings us to the end of this vlog. I had so much fun quad biking here to, I mean, inside the forest here in the eastern region. I had such an amazing time. Can't get to the location, Ghana. Do want to follow them on Instagram and book your spots whenever you're in Ghana. Please don't miss next year December. It's happening. Next year January is happening all year round with Location Ghana. So I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog as much as I enjoyed um, coming along with you. Until next time, guys, please don't be missing my videos. I post on Wednesdays and on Sundays, but now I'm going to be giving you Friday vibes. You vibes so three times a week. I hope you're excited just as I am. Until next time, I want to say I love you all. So we are here at the countryside, which is at Odu Edukrum and it's like a house so they have like activities they have games such as um an indoor game ludo and there's also an outdoor game basketball here which the guys are playing so we we, we took tents so the other guy, group is going so yeah we just ended the quad biking about to play some ludo while we wait for other colleagues and head back to accra it was such an it was such an experience i would urge you all to try it whenever you can it's an easy um it's it's easy it's easy to learn they'll teach you there and then so you don't have to know how to ride a quad bike to be here so yeah Sarah, your turn. my turn i'm the one losing here at the moment oh Hi. five <laughs> Still loses. i know right <laughs> meanwhile i'm the one teaching everyone <laughs> the teacher is losing 
This is how my friends surprised me for my bachelorette party. Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing amazing. It's me, Stella Chanelli, and we are back again, Chale. I hope you are doing well. How have you been? Let me know in the comment section. If you are seeing this face for the first time, my name is Stella Chanelli and I do travel related videos. We are in February, the month of love, and I promised that I was going to be sharing my wedding and my engagement video. So that is why I am here. Today we're going to be talking about my bachelorette party. It was actually a surprise bachelorette party. Just like a like a mini party for yourself before you become um, someone's wife. I got there and this happened. which is my maid of honor called me and she was like oh she wants me to take care of someone i'm like i'm so tired but i'm like okay don't worry i'll still try and make it then she was like oh i should look good it's now a thing that if you are getting married in ghana your friends come together to do like a mini party for you before your wedding i used to tell my friend how i appreciated certain things kind of vibe so i think she knew and she's like why not organize this for stella I mean, everybody knows me. Me, I would attend. Once I know you, once you're my friend and you invite me for a program, I would definitely attend. Brides have a choice to do it themselves, like a surprise. Not like a surprise, since you're doing it yourself, it's just like a party for yourself together with your friend. So my friend went the extra mile to give me a beautiful dress and also to book a makeup artist. <laughs> and I was very surprised. I was surprised because of the people I saw there, number one, and I was surprised because, um, you know, usually, um, like girlfriends usually like to do a bachelorette party like a week before your wedding, but they did it like two weeks prior to the date. So I was like, how long 
did you guys plan this and it was well executed shout out to my friend stella i really really love her. she's also stella if you see her in town please give her a shout out tell her she's the real mvp thank you so much so they did like a sip and paint on the floor like a garden in the room sort of it was beautiful and there were there were canvases to paint there were enough drinks food oh it's, it's such a memorable experience and i encourage everyone try and at least have a bachelorette party before a day because that's the last time you probably see everyone in one room and since i got married i haven't even seen like all of them together like say i'll meet jessica i'll meet Millie, i'll meet Enyonam, everybody together so that was like a reunion for me and i really really appreciate that for my friends shout out to you all thank you so much <laughs> So yeah, this is how it went. when I was in um, Accra I met Loretta because Loretta's friend was also getting married and so she was also buying stuff, some stuff in Accra I met her there and guess what she didn't tell me anything so when I came there and I'm like I saw Lori I was like Lori I saw you today but yeah the experience was beautiful and this is how it went it was such an amazing time but yeah thank you so much for watching this video I can't wait to bring you the engagement video on Sunday and the wedding video the following week I hope you enjoy watching this video let me know in the comment section if it's something you wish for yourself if you don't have friends would you do your own bachelorette let me know in the comment section
ไรอยู่You make the point that um, the deputy majority leader may well be a problematic issue that our colleagues have referred to. You also, in the same way, make the point that there must be mutual respect in this house. Is it right for an honorable member on that side to castigate the honorable deputy leader by suggesting that his rise to power? has been influenced by uh, to fame power fame has been uh, uh, influenced or has been uh, picking bad by his ability to contort and distort the views of other people to 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 gain uh, fame or to gain influence but, but that, that could be as on, uh, on uh, member, i didn't uh, hear that his rise to fame that that is the problem that is what we actually triggered this argument that his rise to fame a dependent, but well, I use the word piggyback, but I think he said has been uh, predicated by his ability to twist other people's views and facts to suit the occasion. That is why he's risen to fame or he's risen to influence. That is what the minority uh, uh, deputy, uh, deputy leader said. Well, of course you are here. Can I complete? Please. Because you have been in this house with the, the big boys like us for many years that is where you can recall. This house, Mr. Speaker, is disintegrated. It is. Mr. Speaker, there's so much shouting, there's so much animosity, no room for tolerance, Mr. Speaker, in this house. We will not be used to this. People get upset because these tantrums are thrown all over the place and Mr. Speaker, the whole place breaks out into insanity. It isn't right, Mr. Speaker. But I'm happy today, Mr. Speaker, you make the point. Monkeys play by sizes. And so people should learn to play their role. My, 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 he's laughing. He, 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 he knows his role. Mr. Speaker, that is the point. Let's try and introduce some sanity to that. Sometimes Mr. Speaker, I sit here and I get completely distressed. For all these years, Mr. Speaker, you were here, there, and that. We haven't observed this. And now, Mr. Speaker, I have inverted. To almost do this, I'm sitting here. They say they won't approve me, so I'm sitting here. Look at all of us. Can you imagine? But I made my point. I mean, I made my point. agreement with Carl Merchant Bank to ensure that the 3.5 million cars will be released at the appropriate time for the work to be done. We agreed on a 100 million CD transfer and as he rightly said 80 million um, has been put into the accounts of Carl and 20 million as he also mentioned uh, will be done by close of business um, today. Um, so we are very comfortable uh, about the situation to ensure that the needed parts will be given to the NIA to do its work. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, the government has been um, extremely um, good about funding elections uh, and once um, NIA's um, job is linked to the elections, Mr. Speaker, we can assure the House that would ensure that the resources needed would always be provided. 
Mr. Speaker, for example, in 2020, the approved budget for um, the Electoral Commission was 1.063 uh, billion um, Ghana cities. Uh, at the end of the day, um, the government released 1.367 billion to ensure that the elections went on well. It's the same um, fervor, interest, and commitment um, that now that the NIA is linked um, to the success of the elections, uh, we'll do our part to ensure that the appropriate resources are made available um, to NIA. Artificial intelligence, is, uh, as the name suggests, is uh, intelligence uh, arising from the use of machines, smart machines, uh, computers, to do what, what human beings would otherwise be doing. We need to have data. We need to begin to know the importance of keeping data. And uh, uh, AI and through data analytics and machine learning will analyze this data and come up and aid decision-making process. People who have not uh, invested in training to migrate from the traditional way of doing things will lose their jobs. As works are being lost, there are new jobs being created. So as you are moving from, let's say, the amazing stage, you can learn something new that has to do with AI, so let's say 3D printing. Showing on March 3, 2023 on Ghana Web TV. Ghana for Moson for me some of my quaba at the bank come over here at Ghana Web TV so we keep money now and some of the baby are going to be a Nigeria for to a bar and my celebrities need to be my and the HSA won't you man chrono be a cosmo to any about one and the on beji at the atom near what gun had no more so dear a more than you a pardon us I'm watching my own so a person you're running mate at the mind people and you're able to a bar at the moment by a flag very be a no percent or you're running mate at the mall in some way you know it if you're talking with me with him me baby be any me dia somo me sama mo akwa ba biem e de bank mo ho e wo gana web tv somo som fu ma me akue che na we de ye tu fa ani ye tu fa e de akọ e ye nigeria memu na insama ko so wo ho nu mi ye pa if it is saturday a e twa mu na to somo start somo tu aba na nya sen keto kra wednesday ya no mu di bibia e kokko gu ye no mu wi ye no no mu chire ma e ade a papa ba kwa e fe ni se bola ahmed ti ni wo no e ne ya fa no se nigeria man peni na ne ba ni celebrity be che so actors singers ne mo mu kika hu e twa ma da bibia da dia we dia anko ye bi mun soso eni age e wo hu ye pa na kana yo kana yo no o ye chini eh sini chani ye pa che so jini din ye pa o chire ma ah na nka march first ah ye declare we na no sa da no e na nka wo so jini birthday sixty first birthday na so e sa se ne ne ma si akọ no chire ma birthday nu we nye ndi bi kan ye video di phone si ni so e yi record ni e che se minute a hold one ka sa che se na nya san keto kra o chire ma ba to no anko ye na ye wo so bo bia na e wo se ya do bo ai ne fo be e mamud yakubu e san so Chema ma eniye masa ni etie wa adie da wo pese eye clear se mhm eye labor party pape eye peter obia ni wini enso so mo se da bi a time da kwa koma tin igbe san so no na bai na efu isu ni ntika na yo chema wa pa ya chese odwen wan nya de obaji aba no e dia to e kokowi e kwada ni 61st birthday no na chese age gwa atun so ma birthday no enya nko so biem na ebi isu no na ebi so sere ene desmond elliot onu so e komi akoye se 
Eh, election see of course we dey akoy e pan e dey amana sense na ban e na ewi ni achese nya sem ketwa kra ni otisi chrome e ni oman for ni agenyu media si so out musa ni jeni dia ni mo odin ye anka sanka sa ye otumusa na ban aba ni aba dia na chese otumusa ni bottom no dey e ba be ye dey e pan na mo otisi so no man for e chrome chese bi mu chere ma eh na so na lio na dey nsu ni e dey nsu wa wonim sa dey abe anko amate ni we e so so mo age atambe ni ate bare na mo acha na papa e tumi na chese wa age abo no bo a chese so that's one of the three more no dear and you're not sem sapa said tini boo it to me we need a benny here and so where we need a mia domo so where we need the annual celebration he then yes and get okay new men your brass bandy a moose system sending in kick on for so hey and you're all true for nadia sin so or bo wedi or no a book on me no a book or joe due to musa entertainment and nijay nidia of course you pay sense and not buying a yet tini boo abbas or not just a was so jine ni ye pa na chase enya sem ketwa Na ewa Nigeria sense mi ya monso ena yesi ni cheni Messi Johnson ubiye ni msoko pie mu ewa Ido State ono so ni ukundia campaign ni dio omu ye biye pa omu boye juma nyami ya domu suwe baye na chase Messi Johnson ni ukwe fengi sepi so koje nyami ya ya na domu ema chase seat na wafane so ono so babaye mrachebe jweni edi ama ye Ido State for na utu mu sofa ni kone ni kuni imeji bi odi bibia tu social media uche msa ah mi kuni wa bonho mwadi wa bonho mwadi ye pa wedi ye win wina chase saada ni dia e fie dia enya and get a candy teacher, and I do not must say I don't be bo a jume ye panas message on the nature of the Yamia say. So it's me a boy new coin airplanes or coy German on Siciano, or by my ship a journey, a dear my do state out to me say, and Eugenie Jenea come a year pan. Na ube pia mwonsu ewa gana hando mawonsa gana diye uni gana niya Nigeria niye Omu tu mikanya hasa miyotu yotu mikon oma sem Na mra ye dikile ti ni buso ni ye wina ina kwa mi ye plas Ndi oba gana hando ma Na nu duwe chye ye pa enye nsema enye no O kembi niya ye nsu di oba abaso Oni ye fwa shwa zine gana che se enye nsem ketwa kwa tu mwuse Omu miye nyo mwa kwa kwa fwa ti ni buwa si se ye dikile nyo son no Ene ye wina ewa Nigeria na Info niwe so wuko yi fri hiyo Obi ya ye ntu mi huwe bi onko fwa fri yo Eno ma fwa ti ni bui na kwa kwa mwuche mwa wa Jala biya eno washe i Muslim for muche i bina o washe e utu muse se se di ano Muslim na efya chasne gachu mu a e a ya tuwa ba tuwa ba tuwa ba about five days or six days no ni utu mi ba imuni a ano di ano di ya huanya chasne o ni a simbiya ka saransu na kwa mi e plus so di ni di ba ba tuwa ma o chumu sa a ano so huma mai on kebi se se muse na we na mo pedia ano kwa mi e plus ni efya di muche ma o mu ni she kana so di ano be kwa ni se se ni amiko pa abua mo no di tini bua be yungwa di e she ni mi se ni be kwa subi ano o mu somo chi o ma so ni o ma no o mu chumbi bi e be subi ano o mu somo ba be tu ya na gana fonso e huni a eko na na watu yeye sudi ya John Dumelo ni ya bagana na chasi ya kanga na nso politics kakra na watu yeye ya ya sini chao formi yenu Frank Nwama na pofe Nwama ena afi ya John Dumelo mso chasi ya umu chema umpe somu yeye mashi beja for edema ya 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 waso West Wagon pote mje juu ulum pote mje nini kikawa wa chasi muo diye pana o mafu yenu sse John Dumelo sse afi 2020 o koko jina ya chasi na ni Malidia na nso kwa yeye mona chasi ni Malidia yetu mi a sana fa na kuni back eni ya Baya no John Dumelo chini woka kwa kwa nini chika kwa na chesa ya fe ni na na ni na na ni ano mamfu ya juu sio wengine woko vuta wengine na chesa waka kuboni juma e wohanum yadai ni ane yano wasandi ya betu social media au chuo msa eh mi ana meko ya suma sini ya baby me ba ya me ba be pray ya chesa eh ni asem kwa kwa me ba na chesa msumo ba be Jimmy Dean e wapo political field na chesa utumu se au sana baby ano waba be pray ya malidia no Trinity pia ebe wana sio ora ba kusoma no suye sini chini e ya friend wana mswe chema eh John Dumelo Sao na wase wako sa wako kwa diyanya miso mabami ya kasa mene mami ya babi kontesi. Sisi si anu akwe ye nipa miyensi sisi ya ye unu ya ya koso. Batu bibiye ni ya gana wabu sani ya ya na ya dipebre mo. Neni omondi ya mu juu media na mpomundi ya wadi ya nchwebe tuja ya na celebrity sa hudo na bibiye na o. Etwe ma a wede ya ye ni chase ni shi ya beka ni ya beka ni se ya beka boma baso. Eni ya beveli ya faglo chase actors. Enyo wa omu omu tonyo wene nkeka mubia ya congratulate ya omu chwe mwisa ya oke. Sa wena modi ya tuma kuma so se kase ya nkase ya bekase oo ma ya adien na oche ame ya debra onono oche ma a john dumelo versus friend nwa ma utu mwese ya adien mbe ya dinye bevali oche ma ya vim ena i am edem jie chinsu ebe congratulate yo mo saranso ena esken white onono swa bonsem edia mo mo ya selasi ibrahim oche ma my setor is coming like kakai mi jie so say yes babe na chese utu mwese omu yina anude dea na chese ubiya ee bonu mwode anampu no mwode omu support ama yeye celebrities mieni sana mbele yao madam eni wa bebi ni bia nuni yeye ane sobe tumia ba na uboa unswa ba bebo ya entertainment industry no.
na Frank no e Fred no ma e na fe e ye John Dumelo hu sense wi e mu e na ora ba ko to nyo musician ay e Fred no say men say twi ma e na na for we are finished because I say a bit more no man say usually when you be at nasi a cha na pon when you move be baby a na so when so ni pon person you baby a wo wo kwai so to make one say me dey fun e san so when you so ni pay be a no e papa na say no she dey papa sir into who say ko for me no e dey baba to ja o tru mu sir mo so person we member members of parliament okay no problem that that's cool but onu dey o tru ma onu who say san ko for me no we a o mo baba press on person we e ma she be your for dey mm hmm onu men say e tru ma onu dey on she da and supporting this because also some of them only more more fit it in collaborating in the account so I'm ready now some person may a machine with your phone dear and there's a new woman on the energy more instant of a current in care bear among coma check a crown no more shadow and she's in the room to never be a a bit to me I'm one at a so much needs me baby yeah now my mind I know somewhere I don't talk to you me a pie or gonna have much rima was some MPP a man you can hear pan me more a day and kasan kasan chono dear Australia and Copons Astra MPP party in Sessan Yami Adom and your Canadian Japon Alan Trematio and Chase a year bow me or Mummy and Sunny Nan will be able to abide the man will be as well. My mayor flag bearer and for my MPP a man you call no or more more call not just a more show which he a pan or more nominate and I'm poor more for no dinosaur man not just a mayor running mate and for my MPP a man you call this and so you'll be our born home body it's as well for him say MPP a man you could die and someone and you more Bobby ye penny rallies I would do it so oh dear Connie I bear me it Twenty twenty crowd of Chema, a good for one and say, Yakopo a pound and a double back of patches, a co yumno, Neku for the so it me a win. No, no, Chemu say, Senior Mia, do not so much to a banner flag where you may be an umbo, more dear, not at all more sure, much he, not an assam, why and bear fun, no, no bear running mate, and for more mumubia, his answer, why I read the pa or Chemu. Na yeye free politics muka kwa ni yenkan sifu fonso na na wachi mwa wao sempa ebeto juu ni serious nene chesho ondi oye mani pana swa siri yeye pa ebeto juu se e ni three months old baby watu na na nume wansi yado na na reho yeye pa na kasa na dampo kumfu kolege e na chesho debe tu juu au chuo muse ata o yare kaka chesho biye hu ni si ebe huo na sodi ababe tu juu au chuo muse yadi ya ras nene elusi e ni three months old baby e ni chuo ma artist gana for ubia fashioning ni messages mo fanya Mama, e rasne ne isan se ya dia uhi ya panti gana web yensi be jina halom ni ya kache rasne ne se ya she ya se mo nun ni nibusi ya funi na ya mo muni na e ya she den na yuntu ni Celestine Donko e chwe ma. On one Sunday, the best shed the Jimmy Dia Fenner says, Celestial Prisoner. Not just on no hit song, I don't know hit song, Pan, no nibu, or nibaco bacco cra. No, you man, as I time, no one in I supernatural. Into not or trema, we are artists, not so called a stage swa. I was all born with the Abetum, your man, and your own core phone, and our mama by a concert, maybe able to me at two along, but a comment was on no sat time, no nine, you know, or nibu supernatural pen or on tina, and who are born, I shall not say, or dream one on tears here. But in your uncle Gunu, and couple to me born, man, is celestial prisoner. O tumi ye ye anache sondi o chie ma ase dan kwa nene uko pie mu E wo jwa FM4 mu ju medie entertainment show a Che son mo ye no disansi fwa nene na etu ujwa Na instam ni de bibi ye wo hono mpa na Anso lo ansana no un mi chami hon si me bim na me ba Bibi ye hono mbi ano Besa anso di ashisha swa mamu kwa ba e de banko mo ho e wo Ghana Web TV so mo so mfo ma me kwa me amenie na me kwa ko pie mu e wo sister efia na afi efi odo omo akache na omo mie no ba Ghana hanu ma ntokope e wo mo ntem no bi nim se wan na age wan boy o me ma me kwa de me ntumi nchire but se boy is send bia koso a wo mbo mo mo de na mo sort ne house na sister efia e tre ma ono sisi asisi e se de omo ko buko mu arena na chese ya de fight bi ba ne e ka se sister efia wo be bo efi odo o te ade ntia wo de sa ma no sa amanta wo ne keke na chese Kaje ni se bono, oche mo ono anka sope se pen ono a bro se 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 e fi ordo ama che se wanka sa wongu se e fi ordo na wongu se ni ni mno ase san yi e krana che se e nya san ketan ketan oche ma e fi ordo we dia o se me nkan chila o se bebi a wobi a ye ready mo ono si se fi a yi san se bebi o be shia wobi a no bo hongu mo di an se fight ni bi ba che se o ba be show a bo e ma wanka sa we fili go da che se e nya san ketan akra na ganye na chwe sugar titi e chwe ma ono siye ba nupi ma gropa o tumi kwa long hours 
long hours per year panti me produce about ko hazel say no so no no kona say on on to me born home wadi anache say who say don't me fast sugar titi and it just don't me fun a coin so cry it's answer sugar titi chema or no i or better i do cc and you're more damn pimwa and you're one hour two hour not just two hours no more bo mube we are not just a mark or break be more co break new year not just or no no a banana just must have to move you my dinner so what you want to need time or the baby will see after another year 10 minutes one minute in 10 seconds or no or nisa da jenu kwenye u ba u fan na dene tu mpe wa bo hu mwadi anse u be u ba beye wa na yen u vanya fina ba beye i'm tired i'm tired shuka ti teche ma u ye be ma na wa na u mbo hu mwadi u ni mpe wa gra em fan na kwa anse san so no o hu nu mi o ye obi a che se a ji wa mba na kwe mo be raidu si sa mwa anka sa wa fili na in central ni a wa kwa dari on central jume ni mu pa e ye na na ba an na mwa e de se mfwe bi a tuja onu suwe che mu sa no onu mwe o ye oba on pe be ma o pe edriani kwa so che ma me me bi mwa onu mwa kwa wari o mwa e vi chase minis vya edriani sinne ni mwa waka be mkwe be ye five no be tu miye dini ni na da moment o ye an sana wa so ya sa ko pe koki bi e de ye tiza o che ma ono de u ye be ma na u pe edriani be bi a and fun fun come on pesa ne be ma de ma we dwane ne rice ne at half plate what your chicken back on salad kakra what your drink so kakra ne sin che nan kakama kama kama so be ma bi wo no ma so be kwa be kwa pan dwane e sin anim no enye dwane ke to na aba na ma so no all me she's too gentle for that on ye ready so be wa we be ma o pay dwane enye week bi na wo se wo ye dwane o se no so e line be no nti me de e me ma wa wo nim se we ni wo na aba na ma mu no o se me nkan che wo se um so pay dwane a em fa na kwa ni nya ni so dwane ka kre bi brofo ka kra na tete wo sa no you are accepted o pe dwane a sha no anfa anfa ni ni san sa adi o de be ye o no wan ka sa sha adi a o be fi hu na eye ekuapin polo a si si adi e o chema ye mfe no hajia o de semfo bi atuja ndi si ano de ababe tuja eh na nsomanfo ni mse o ko fi eye dk bi ano e me ko wiem no de na ye de jamanfo e chema eh na wo kwa ko fa be ma won fo bi a wo chese onu mu stacha na obi a oso ase ye no na kwa ko fa na wa ko fi na na e fine ko si sen na ba ye no manfo e she ni ma sen ka ekuapin polo ni dk bi e ba be ka won sem na nka asem ni e de na sem ko na so anfa ba fe na chese ba be pie mu ana po akọ interview so di nche mu aba ana wo che mu se unia ade ni fia no ko fie ni nye anything serious bi a wo se sa ada no na di ke bi e ba be ye show che so ba be promote ni show enti se na be ye be bo na show ni tumi akọ ni nyim na nti e na che so mu ye sa na nyanko po adu mu sun sun ni omo ye no e ma show no etumi ko ni nyim ye pa enti so ma nfo e ke ka sa ni omo o che mpna e na ade nti na ko ko fie di ke bi a na fa ko se o che ma shi ni wono nothing is going on between them e kids ke ke se na be ya e be tumi abo na che se to me a promotion show in Chaman for Munjana Moke can listen to your people at your mass, this young in Chimun at your man, your modiano, and just for promotion to be a and cut them. Na she abo so ma sai pie mu week yi mo nso na won fun misala so de ko pie mu e wo delay interview so odi nsin fu akoko to to dwa e bi kra de no che mu sai e no ye be fu na fine ko si sai na won fun misa sai na da na ko pie mu wo interview ni so so no ka che delay sai delay be ma no ho kwan a obe ware na ma che se e nya sen keta kwa no no che ma wo honu mi o woni sika nya mi e shira no che se bibia o nya ko pon e di ama no san so no wo honu ye bo sheba nti se delay be ma no ho kwan a obe ware no kama kama na wa che se wa che no star obe a life o be man the good life an kasan kasa out mo sana show ndeso de e mo ya din ya na delay e twebu sense sisi an oba oba be de de amana o twebu o de bo ho modia ni ehia ne so be ware mi tra bosom o ware mi wi a bibi e ho no bi ano me be she she so mo an kasan so wa feel good e pa e wo ho no na also for tra bosom e san so e wo sinfo e bi o pe so bi sa gana fo e na fe delay na o twebu o pe so bi ta se aso heaven and hell e ya chamber and hall ana na no o kasa fa won se ugu read bible na cho som be cho cho sem no e wo look won no be bi ana chese e ka se ohia ni e na fi sike ni ana chese ohia e sike ni no e ma na o ti ase no e ni ohia ni ni bi sa no hwea o ma no na so ko pie mu no na chese ohia ni e ko ba ni so ka ko pie mu e wo heaven e na chese o sike ni no so wo hell sike ni ni ka che e ye abraham se be yan ko fa ni sa keke monsium na chese ko fa ni teke ma so se ne be ya obetumi enya nkwane no na chira bo so me bi sa se e na since when did heaven and hell become chimen hola 
notice ya dey obi to meet her no dey inside bonsium e dey at all take am so me ja dey 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 e she we e to me abu am at say bibia jo for money o chema bibia o bible ni money nyina e ye papa ba ko create no no ma e ye no create no chema concert be no no history be na say bible wo anga say to me catholic say e dey che me then our patch no ti sha wo so me che ma heaven and hell aso person be say na for say aso heaven and hell e ye che ma e hola na we dey question na ye dey am o ni bibia o be sha tu a wo so bia wo answer bia na o to me send the man me she say on so be jesus na che so din cheche mu bia amao Era ba o to nyo mosan so mpo eye nurse ni Ayona Rain e de eye cho pa kesi e pa e de akwako ma Miss Bell no ma fo enim se eye Ayona Rain ni na ni eche so ni Miss Bell omo ye good friends and kasa se mother and daughter afi 2020 mu ye be hu ane se omo ntamu atete e ma na un se Miss Bell so ni efia sho anso de omo ntamu hwada anye fine afi de eye Ayona ifi ho no ma na one ode no hu akwako bo efia sho asne ga che se na afi de omo kuti a eye Miss Bell e me da ni se mpi ma wan fo ye che se ah Ayona ifa wa che se you Grateful. How can you do that? Because what must say, Miss Bell, you know to me, a bow or produce one young man in Kikan, where I feel there will be one is a one cousin, so near here. Or Montemu shut down your final fido choir, or no one can't go born just in some day, you be brave. Yepa, none of your denya, nay, I own a HM or one cousin who say, Why I miss Bob Bonnie Yepa, and so they chop packets here, Pasitia, Namia Corno, I own a same never be brave, Honoma, or Pesto Jatu, a trace, and so Musa Sisia, no one, I be brave, will be one, what a shock, gone too soon. Oh, then just I have a brain. So no person will be wa. I better than him. Then just say, na jumu be buni for until no person be biya enkongo de di. To be a wayen the buni biya. Niti chupa pan ene mesbo. Are you natural ma or straw? For the buni ni natural no. Na nse ma akwa suni de anya de bi e be si biyum da. Niti yantu ye catch us a mesbo. Be biya wo biya wo ba wasan ba na si bon mo di anya just be biya wo nu biya no. For the buni ni na e fa chen no. Gospel musician, a eh, yeah, message gifty, a joy, a joy, and no call nice. I'm a train press gifty. A trema, unia, uo honum now, kako waria. Bohomo dear, we are bow here, bear more when you say cheating, only me. We will be to me after we cheat at any time. Who can be to me after we cheat at any time to walk? Psycho, what do you know? Say, oh, Kono, I dear Bessiano, no, any oka, no, no partner. Munya agreement, say, or do. So when you say that I cannot stay with you, pe. So what's that? Me kwa bonsi. I'm to me kwa ye biya onu. To kwa bonu madia. Na monya ma dream ba. Kuna mumu say ye cheating the normal. Na wotu ma sa osa sun poko. Na che sa one cycle mind. I will be one sa one bodam. Esa sa me ma ye will be a mumu a home to ye pan. Tini o yoba. Na so ye anasa po ye biya ma ukwa bonu madia ni ono partner no cycle mind. Ye wa dream ye se mi ukwe. Me ni say anything can happen. Na ukwa kofa. E di bodu kwe di su ti swa. A dear Bessie, dear, and go and shall not quack or how I drink to me, dear. A gift I do, I saw a family, so my mere catcher a gun of phone, and I worry for no more, some more person more worry no. So, oh, quack, but who more than say cheating, woe on me, a something normal, and conco funnel, zin 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 be a ranch, I say, a bit to me, a quack or how I drink, a bequack of you, crown, not just a way to me about them. Now, in some more kind of cheating, and I a yes, a lesson, don't call no swear, and you to me, or dear to yourself, or no dear, Sansa, my dear, on gin to mukra, on gin to mukra, I didn't see, and I was a woke how I were. Ubedi ya betu waju musa ya imi ukwe chiti ni ya wano chema it doesn't help. Okon bo humo diya sa mo okona to make something work. Na chese mwenye na anoma juu njue huwa na sene bebe ma wawi ya nwa kona se utu mi bo humo diya ka sa enye mi wawi mi kwa kwa wawi mi nwuse mi kumbe chiti diya onu e ye selestin dongo e chema enya diya onye sansi mfwa na gifti ya doye kain onye ni ye adu ni kreye ye ntu wu ni kwa kwa wawi ya usu bo humo diya neko te anything can happen but then mfwa wawi ya mkwa sa kwa 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 mi kumbe chiti nse ni minsu mi ukwe minsu miko bo mabos Dede de nya dia an sha na intumi anfa anfa ma na gana nyumtuni a ice cream face balagaza bana na 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 ono na sam na make o chemo man for munim say na nsen e ka de aka che so be wu an sa o isan say o man for bi e ba sen come better so ma be poison na na che say nya san keta kra ono o chemo o onu mi opobia usually anambo yo bi a usually o pese no kwa etini be bi ku na che so o jem from na o se pe drink kra na we na che so kokoye bi ni o tin ba bi a che so o jini di o je drink o be won say am boys bi a ba ono ma che so say screw face screw face screw face we na say yen ne kasa fi de o me won say asen tokobi e koso e we ti ono be bi no mo ka che ni say say ne si o ni ti 
In something that I will run, ne quack cranny a quay cheap cobbing in and say, or buy a drink and all no more with Jesse one son or boy see at the poison a good drink in him. Now, Ochema, or buy and a drink, no fan of the move back or catch and said, I be man no man's and I feel their drink in his work, also drinking in your apple pool as I yes towel be into a fire so or co wash him or cock or she drink now. Come on, Sasana poison pan a good drink at us on no mere and can we one as I feel called by a baby be some boys yes and when a year say ya or by our words no almost to mean ye for me or by ya. Will be any one to the foot to a pan at the Amagana for any will be beer, saying yes, I won't be beer, baby. I know she may be a sense in the poem, me a three mosum, cause only more more baby. I what to me a basso by poison. No, you may never know to a honoma, no one shown who ye ain't here than your messy. So, what to me a boy is creepy. No one buying na eh slim bust and so dear or you'll be at to say a banner sa or bon home or dee pan or bon you not to say or sound so eddy account na a come up yes and an agrada didn't seem for be out to dread your first slim bust and home and unseen slim bust at chema agrada what can you come on for and seven so me slim bust at master my work kind dear which must have ready and talk upon at a water trend dear bar or chema you have bitten the wrong meter and you have some no dear in why didn't you pan one for him son and say and an agrada it's in the tv so a chimney sign who could pay more you can memoir Basta, eh, and yas and ketwa crash, I said, while quack could repeat four year old girl be a noon to know it. Ya chink, I say, a slim basta tomb, I feel soon pon no slim basta ye gay. Just in some need a baby brain, and then some you are crying in a slim basta chums, eh. Nana grada, oh, a man forbid me don't want some a corner, so then you miss slim basta. Nan semi or car for me, baby crown who some of my quack could repeat be, be crown who some of me again, no, brana betcha miss slim basta mo. It's an idea about so no, and yas and ketwa crant, yea, go so I share, near Bessie Bian. Now, what you're saying, the best answer for Edmund and Abba Begunia, she's saying, and some no so, a busy idea and you're not slim basta, a goose wire, she shan't an agrada, not just on my jaw, moody, and one gun a hanum, dear nene, and hey, and you don't come all honum, ever since we see me dean, and in my mere creature, that's a name, so you ever say, she's not in summer, of course, so, and when entertainment industry, you know, you know, you know, ever but someone, I'm also, what feel ye, pa, and then you can't, you know, and say, I'm a ha, and I'm watching, and I'm a joke, baby, I'm a piano, bye bye. Honorable Deputy Majority Leader's rise to fame is based on his twisting and turning of what people say. That definitely is unfair. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I respectfully will withdraw that. But, Mr. Speaker, let me state Thank something. You. The Honorable Afenyo Market, the Honorable Afenyo Market will have the courage to tell me. Honorable Kofi Bua, a four-term member of parliament who has worked 20 years in the corporate world, who has served as deputy minister properly vetted, served as a minister of state, that I don't have the courage. I am a courageous man. That's why I've served this country so honorably. I've even been a deputy minister in this country. Since I've been here, you... Actually, honorable members, we don't, we don't, nobody can sue you for what you say on the floor of this house. The limitations are just a few. That's why we are using the term immunity, not privilege. Immunity, you are immune. And so please, when you are expressing your opinions and your views, do that in decent, decorous, respectful language. Please, Deputy Majority Leader, you know this issue has been hanging on for some time. And the minority leadership has made it clear that you are one of the problems that they face here. I thought that direct statement 
would have made you change your discourse. But yesterday, when I gave you another opportunity, what you said fueled the situation. I want to urge you to move away from it. Deputy Majority Leader, you are my son, a dear son to me. I want you to move away from it. As you may be well aware, yesterday you had an occasion to raise some concerns about our approach in terms of language use. I must say that when sitting came to a close, uh, my respected colleague Emmanuel Amakofibo and I met. We had a fruitful discussion regarding the matters in issue. And I think. Uh, we resolved that things would get far, far better and better and better uh, henceforth. And I believe that the mutual respect that exists between the two of us, proud to he uh, getting his elevation, will remain. Of course, we also realize that both of us were misconstruing. Uh, certain matters because of some other external uh, matters out there unbeknown to us. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to assure you and assure the House that as far as uh, I am concerned, any time I get on my feet, it is for the good of the politics of this House. However, I've taken his concerns on board, and that will guide the approach. So, Mr. Speaker, these are the words I have for you. Uh, for anything that he might have said, uh, touching on my ego character or whatever it is, I have forgiven him, and I have let go. We've discussed that, and uh, we've taken water of it, over it. We didn't take beer or wine. I'm sure after, after the Lent, uh, we would uh, have a go at uh, a bottle of uh, Coke. Just because the truth is that I have allergies, so Coke is something that I can entertain, not uh, beer. My majority leader is looking at my face. Just because, because he knows we are partners. Don't bring in majority leader. Just because he, just because he yes, wants to talk about face. you and... Uh, <laughs> Let's be that. So, Mr. Speaker, that was on a lighter note. Yes. So, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yes, may we hear from the for the wise council yesterday. Indeed, I met the uh, respected Honorable Fenyo Maki yesterday. We agreed that we are in uh, here because of the people's business. We can only work together to make sure that we achieve is very important work that has been given to us. And what is required is trust and professionalism. And um, I assured him, as our leader did from the first day, our intention here is to make sure we work, not to obstruct government business, but to make sure we can work together uh, for the people of Ghana. And it is in that spirit that we are going to work. I also uh, told him that, you know, we are in the Lent period, and uh, if there are things that are said that were offensive, I have uh, things he said that are offensive, I'm forgiving. <laughs> in fact, and I have, and we move forward together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
of the system of the identification authority and indeed the Ghana card have resorted to the use of the Ghana card. And these institutions are, one, the Bank of Ghana, 24 commercial banks, 146 rural and community banks, 16 savings and loans schemes, 16 fintechs, five finance houses, three microfinance institutions, the Ghana Revenue Authority, the Social Security and National Insur Insurance Trust, SNIT, the National Health Insurance Authority, and now the Detra Commission, Ghana Immigration Services, the Telcos, the National Service Secretariat, Student Loan Trust, and the Passport Office, as well as a few months ago, DVNA. So if the Commission wants to do this, colleagues, what is wrong with this? Uh, does anybody remember when this card was being issued to former President John Mahama, what he said? When they went to register him, do you all remember what he said? After the issuance of the card, he said that yes, today he has seen and he believes that this system has integrity and can be relied on. Yes, and now your people are shying away from it. And they are saying that we can't use it. I can't for the life of me. And of course, speaking for my colleagues, I don't know what you are saying. It's, it's, it's beyond comprehension. The, the, they are now saying that, oh, why, why, why are you hiving off the, the uh, guarantee system? We've heard of the birth certificates. Why are they not saying that birth certificates should be brought back? The, the EC has hived off the um, baptism certificate. Why aren't they saying that it should be brought back? Why aren't they saying that the health insurance uh, card should be brought back? Why aren't they saying that, oh, the passport should be brought back? The concentration is on the, on the voucher system. Why? What is behind that? <laughs>
the year of the show. I, I think it was, was one of the biggest mistakes in my life. I shouldn't have looked into the auditorium to see everything before. So I looked and then I went off my. I forgot. You I forgot your eyes. <laughs> because you know, like you and I told you, I said, "Hey, me, I go out." is this and every Friday on Ghana Web TV. Now, oh me. Lemonade finance. Say, money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I am softer. I get instant charges. Yes. I think we're telling so you. I get unbeatable. We should make promo code Dr. Likey. Make your ten pound, ten dollars, and a ten Canadian dollars. The first transaction. We just send this guy a coffee. No, download Lemonade finance. So we're back again on this week's episode of the Ghana Web Sports Debate. Today, I'm sitting in for your regular host, Emmanuel Lenin. Yesterday was the FIFA Men's Awards with Lionel Messi being crowned as the Footballer of the Year. Today, we're asking if CAF is organizing the CAF Awards this weekend. Between Mohamed Kudus of Ayas, Thomas Partey of Arsenal, and Napoli's Victor Osimi, who are you voting for? Let me hear from you in the comment section as we interact with football fans here on the streets of Accra. My name is Joel Shen. Follow me as I get some answers and then uh, people's favorites as far as African footballers are concerned. So yesterday was the FIFA Best Award. Lionel Messi was crowned as the overall best player in the year 2022. 20, uh, Today we are asking if we are supposed to organize the CAF Awards this week. Between Mohamed Kudus, Thomas Partey and Nigeria's Victor Osimi, who will you vote as the best African player? I'm going to Ghana Web TV, so I'm going to FIFA Best Awards. I'm going to say that between Kudus, Osimi and Thomas Partey, why not? I think Osimi. Osimi is really doing well. Okay. Like in game changes, send your bonny ball, you know, like the affection of the game, you no, know, it's yeah. so perfect. I think Osime. So it's Osime. The goal scoring. Yeah. So what you are saying? I think Osime. Yeah. I think he's the fastest to reach 100 goals between you know Mercy and Christian Ronaldo. Yeah. So the guy is doing really doing well. Yeah, but uh, others have also been saying that Mohamed Kudus has been brilliant. Oh, oh, he's doing very well, but not Osime. Osime is fantastic. Seriously, the guy is really doing well, and I like him. All right, so it's Victor Osimhen for you, uh, for him. Let me hear from you in the comment section. Kudus, Pate, and Osime. If you are voting for African Best Player of the Year, who will you vote for? Andrew, I'm going to FIFA Best Awards. So this week, I'm going to CAF Footballer of the Year Awards. Now, between Mohamed Kudus, Victor Osime, and Thomas Pate, why? And I'm going to go to the To me, they say, I'm going to go I are going for Kudus. <laughs> going for Mohamed Kudus. Mohamed Kudus. Because I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, the best among the three. You know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But Victor Osime, eh, Chef Goes. Eh, oh, Chef Goes. Eh, yeah, yeah, we, eh, yeah. Thomas Patensu, Lidi Asna. Eh, Lidi Asna. I know so well. But to me, you know, Mohamed, I mean, so, I interest in what I'm saying. I don't know if I'm mean, the best player. I mean, I'm the best player. All right. See, I want to say, Mohamed Kudus, Victor Simen, and Thomas Patrick. Mohamed Kudus. Mohamed Kudus. Sure. Are they for a plan? They are for a plan. Okay. But the problem is that I am not know if I am a genie. They say, I am born in a ball form. But I can't say I am the first and second there. I am the Osman Bear second. Osman Bear second. Sure. Patrick Ted. Patrick Ted. Okay, so it's Kudus 2, 
Osime one. We've already spoken to three people. Between Kudus, Victor Osime, and Thomas Party, if you are voting for CAF Footballer of the Year, who will you vote for? Let me hear from you in the comment section. Andrew, I'm a FIFA Best Award, no, Leo Messi, Energy, Eddie Kano, FIFA Best Award, no, Ekoyema. Ekoyema, my pa. Nipana Peso Winnie, I know Winnie. Nipana Peso Winnie, I know no Winnie. Okay. And Tiaba Africa, Mohamed Kudus, Victor Osime. Any Thomas party said this week the air calf awards now. Why not to a bar? Oh, maybe I'm going to my party. Good mama Thomas party. Correctly. Now, uh, could use any usime or more performance in this way. Oh, you know, I'm fine. But maybe the party moment I'm feeling. Oh, the mama Thomas uh. party. Thomas party for him. So it's Kudus two, party one, usime one. Uh, but yeah. my phone was in the room. Mohammed Kudus. Thomas Pate, Victor Simon, why not to have a good mama Kudus, I did it. I'm feeling the I'm feeling the baby. 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 I'm feeling the one for Osime and one for Thomas Party. And see, uh, the and one of the FIFA best awards, you know, uh, Leon, Leon Messi, see, our FIFA best seven, Ballon d'Or seven. Awards, you know, send an open and a coin. Well, so far, the award was genuine. Of course, for World Cup, based on World Cup tournaments, you know, okay. on your day, or you're the best. And so far, the country carried the trophy. So, so far, the award was genuinely his. Leon Messi deserved it. Although, Ronaldo Suwoho. I'm a fan of Ronaldo. But the idea one no know then would be yes. It was genuinely perfect for him. That was right. And he said this week and I hear Africa best awards now. Mohamed Kudus, Thomas Party, and the Victor Sime. Oh so far if Metua Bani be a Metuama Victor Sime. Victor Sime. Yes. I didn't hear. It's a Metuama Victor Sime. So far this season, watch your quality. We team are carrying the team no, to a standard uh, which means uh, for now Napoli is on its best. Yeah. Napoli since way back uh, Diego Amado Maradona, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for trophy. And we team are carrying the team no, to everybody with Drew Pepper, so I'm waiting for the trophy now. It's it's quite good. And our scoring chart no, in Italy, Ronaldo Bayi be no, scoring in eight consecutive matches. Victor Simon from Africa, we team are be so so far he deserve it. Although party could do party, a very good player, but or injury prone. Party injury prone. So far, you know, tournament you could in our bar Africa for our country Ghana to me perform at its best. So, you know, for me, for me, my first will be Victor Simon. Second, eh, Mohamed Kudus. Kudus is very best. So, you know, that's all. That's all Kudus. Uh, so Victor Simon one, Kudus two, and Thomas Party three. Let me also get your response in the comment section. Among these three players, if you are voting for Cup Footballer of the Year, who are you picking? Andra, I'm your FIFA Best Award, Leo Messi, Energy, Okoyema. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, manage here because we deserve it. Because World Cup, we're not more than we're not more than I think say Onya is not manage here, yeah, fine, manage here. Okay, and until you're the bar Africa, so this week, and I hear here. A calf awards, calf football of the year now. Between Mohamed Kudus, Thomas Pate, and Victor Osime, one out of our one. Well, um, Pate is doing well. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, oh, uh, I aspire. But for me, I was now. For me, remember, um, Victor Osime. Victor Osime. Yeah, that guy is doing very, very, very well. Or boy investors. Or some boy, or some boy, me and your best credit. And to Victor Osime. Oh, yeah, yeah. For me, on the my phone. Okay, I mean, uh, my phone soon broom uh, between the uh, Victor Simon, Thomas Party, and uh, Mohamed Kudus, your booty, Africa uh, Footballer of the Year. Oh, come on. I mean, uh, to me, no, uh, first uh, Kudus, uh, Ghana, ni fine. Oh, yeah, this is only pick more, but Osime, yeah, oh, my own feeling, it's still Osime, yeah, coming with Tom Osime. I'm not feeling it now. Oh yes, I only pick like team Naga. So I'm not pick. What I say? Green, 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 green. I know red. And yeah, yeah, I'm. So what I say? Aha. So what I say? Can I know what I say? You know, Osimende. Oh, number one for Africa. 
this time. Why? Victor Simon, uh, for him, it's getting quite interesting. Thomas party so far, uh, party has only one vote, but you can also uh, participate in this conversation by giving us your response in the uh, comment section. Between Thomas party for Arsenal, they are uh, leading the Premier League table. Mohamed Kudus in the Eredivisie for Ayas, they are third on the league table and then Victor Osimi is leading a revolution in the city of Naples as Napoli uh, try to win their first league title after Diego Armando Maradona in 1986. Let me hear from you in the comment section. My name is Joel Lechen. Until we meet again, it's bye for now. So we're back again on this week's episode of the Ghana Sports Debate. Today, I'm sitting in for your regular host, Emmanuel Lenin. Yesterday was the FIFA Men's Awards with Lionel Messi being crowned as the Footballer of the Year. Today, we're asking... On E forum. I remember the blood in the middle of the stage after so many years, mm -hmm. and then after you can't just watch it and say that we were in front of the loss, we are not yeah. going to pay. So we had to go and look for money to pay everybody. We, we, we paid everyone. So we finished, we were only like um, about 40,000. And then the little that we had at the gate also, mm -hmm. we had to use that one to pay sound and other things as well. So we were left to like 200 or 150, I remember very well. And that was the money that we had to share between us. It was a tragedy because mm -hmm. you see, you are the producer mm -hmm. and you also play the lead. You yeah. know, like it's, it's, it's a two of us, we are, we are playing the lead. So, before even the play starts, you know, you are just fine to see whether you get open the auditorium. Mm -hmm. So, just imagine you have invested so much money, you are playing the lead, and you just look into the auditorium, and there are like 50 or right, right, I, just, I just peeped <laughs> the end of the show. I, I think it was, it was one of the biggest mistakes in my life. I shouldn't have looked into the yeah. auditorium to see everything before. So, I looked and then I went off my. I forgot. You I forgot, forgot your <laughs> E Forum airs this and every Friday on Ghana Web TV. Artificial intelligence, is, uh, as the name suggests, is uh, intelligence uh, arising from the use of machines, smart machines, uh, computers, to do what, what human beings would otherwise be doing. We need to have data. We need to begin to know the importance of keeping data. And uh, uh, AI and through data analytics and machine learning will analyze this data and come up and aid decision-making process. People who have not uh, invested in training to migrate from the traditional way of doing things will lose their jobs. As works are being lost, there are new jobs being created. So as you are moving from, let's say, the amazing stage, you can learn something new that has to do with AI, so let's say 3D printing. Showing on March 3, 2023 on Ghana Web TV. Honorable Deputy Majority Leader's rise to fame is based on his twisting and turning of what people say. That definitely is unfair. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I respectfully will withdraw that. But, Mr. Speaker, let me state Thank something. You. The Honorable Afenio Maki, the Honorable Afenio Maki will have the courage to tell me, Honorable Kofi Bua, a four-term member of parliament who has worked 20 years in the corporate world, who has served as deputy minister properly vetted, served as a minister of state, that I don't have the courage I am a courageous man. That's why I've served this country so honorably. I've even been a deputy minister in this country. Since I've been here, you, Actually, honorable members, we don't, we don't, nobody can sue you for what you say on the floor of this house. The limitations are just a few. 
That's why we are using the term immunity, not privilege. Immunity, you are immune. And so please, when you are expressing your opinions and your views, do that in decent, decorous, respectful language. Please, Deputy Majority Leader, you know this issue has been hanging on for some time. And the minority leadership has made it clear that you are one of the problems that they face here. I thought that direct statement would have made you change your discourse. But yesterday, when I gave you another opportunity, what you said fueled the situation. I want to urge you to move away from it. Deputy Majority Leader, you are my son, a dear son to me. I want you to move away from it. As you may be well aware, yesterday you had an occasion to raise some concerns about our approach in terms of language use. I must say that when sitting came to a close, uh, my respected colleague Emmanuel Amakofibo and I met. We had a fruitful discussion regarding the matters in issue. And I think. Uh, we resolved that things would get far, far better and better and better uh, henceforth. And I believe that the mutual respect that exists between the two of us, proud to he uh, getting his elevation, will remain. Of course, we also realize that both of us were misconstruing. Uh, certain matters because of some other external uh, matters out there unbeknown to us. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to assure you and assure the House that as far as uh, I am concerned, any time I get on my feet, it is for the good of the politics of this House. However, I've taken his concerns on board, and that will guide the approach. So, Mr. Speaker, these are the words I have for you. Uh, for anything that he might have said, uh, touching on my ego character or whatever it is, I have forgiven him, and I have let go. We've discussed that, and uh, we've taken water of it, over it. We didn't take beer or wine. I'm sure after, after the length, uh, we would uh, have a go at uh, a bottle of uh, Coke. Just because the truth is that I have allergies, so Coke is something that I can entertain, not uh, beer. My majority leader is looking at my face. Just because, because he knows we are partners. Don't in. bring in majority leader. Just because he, just because he wants to talk about you and... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, so Mr. Speaker, that was on a lighter speaker. note. Yes. So, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yes, may we hear from the for the wise council yesterday. Indeed, I met the uh, respected honourable Fenyo Maki yesterday. We agreed that we are in uh, here because of the people's business. We can only work together to make sure that we achieve is very important work that has been given to us. And what is required is trust and professionalism. And um, I assured him, as our leader did from the first day, our intention here is to make sure we work, not to obstruct government business, but to make sure we can work together uh, for the people of Ghana. And it is in that spirit that we are going to work. I also uh, told him that, you know, we are in the length period, 
and uh, if there are things that I said that were offensive, I have uh, things he said that are offensive. I'm forgiving. <laughs> In fact, and I have, and we move forward together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This morning, your people have gathered because of what you instituted from the very beginning. Well, bless your name for what you are prepared to do in our midst this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 From KLM, keep loving me. Hallelujah. Amen. Kaje yo wa dromo kwe na meji wo. E dromo ni shikanye he. E dromo ni he fwa konyafe. E dromo ni moko moko he wale konyafe he no kwe. E kwe dromo libine. Amen. E wong beke ke ni dromo. Hallelujah. Amen. E mama kwa ba o. Why you had the end to move for? Hey, hey. 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 He can't they who tread the path of labor. Follow where his feet have trod. They who work without complaining do the holy will of God. Evermore thou may you seek me. For I am with you everywhere. Raise the stone that shall find me. Cleave the wood and I am there. Amen. 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 Artificial intelligence is, uh, as the name suggests, is uh, intelligence uh, arising from the use of machines, smart machines, uh, computers, to do what, what human beings would otherwise be doing. We need to have data. We need to begin to know the importance of keeping data. And uh, uh, AI and through data analytics and machine learning will analyze this data and come up and aid decision-making process. People who have not uh, invested in training to migrate from the traditional way of doing things. 
will lose their jobs. As works are being lost, there are new jobs being created. So as you are moving from, let's say, the amazing stage, you can learn something new that has to do with AI, so let's say 3D printing. Showing on March 3, 2023 on Ghana Web TV. <laughs>
the committee met yesterday and agreed on the following as a proposal for, for the order for business to be conducted for fifth week ending Friday the 10th of March 2023. Mr. Speaker, may I read any available communications to the House. Honorable members, let's pray. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to look with favor upon this Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. Grant that it may perform its high duty as in thy sight. Give divine guidance to the President of the Republic. And thou, members of Parliament and ministers of state with discernment and vision, integrity and courage that through the labors of government this land and people may be well and truly served and that good purpose human life be realized in our midst oh god grant us a vision of our country fair as it might be a country of righteousness where none shall wrong his neighbor a country of plenty, where evil and poverty are away with. A country of brotherhood, where all success shall be founded on service, and honor shall be given to the deserving. A country of peace, where government shall rest on the will of the people, and the love for the common good. Bless the efforts of those who struggle to make this vision a living reality. Inspire and strengthen our people, that they may give time, thought, and sacrifice to speed the day of the coming beauty of Ghana and Africa. Amen. Honorable members, item four, correction of votes and proceedings and official report. We will start with the correction of votes and proceedings of Tuesday, 28th February, 2023. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. 
six. Page seven. Page eight. Page nine. All right, remember, are you standing for me to recognize you? You have been on your feet for some time. All right, speaker. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it properly. Oh, I apologize. Senior I member, honorable attache. Yes, right oh, on speaker. You are at your uh, wrong seat. That's why I can recognize you. I apologize profusely. Thank you, thank you. Page eight. Page nine. Page ten. Page eleven. Yes, Honorable Ablafwa. I'm most grateful, right now, Speaker. Right now, Speaker, at page 11, uh, just before item number nine, adjournment, the rendition here is that sitting was suspended at 2.52 p.m. and then sitting resumed at 8.05 p.m. Uh, the practice of the House, as I've observed over the years, is that when we are suspending for a committee of the whole sitting, it is stated expressly that, we, that the House took a suspension for a committee of the whole meeting. Uh, that's, even last week, I recall that that's, that's how it was captured. But uh, I see a departure here where uh, this is, is just suspension and then resumption at 8.05 p.m. Uh, I acknowledge that on the next page, there's a supplement of the committee of the whole meeting, but uh, I thought that we will be consistent with what has been the practice of the House. I'm trying to recollect what you refer to as the practice. I don't recollect that we always suspend uh, for a committee of the whole meeting. That is always stated. If we start that practice, then any time we suspend, they must follow with a reason for the suspension. And when I'm even under pressure and I suspend, then it has to be stated. That, that I, I don't think, will be a very good practice. I think if it happened last week, then table office, you have to really look at it. We suspend. We don't state the reason for the suspension. There are many reasons why we suspend. And there's some may not be necessary for the knowledge of even members or the public. So I think we should leave it as it is sitting suspended at 2.52 p.m. Yes, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I, I have the direction that you provided, except that the member really was calling for consistency. I don't really recall the, the incident that he's referring to, the date. So I guess we can leave that to the table officers to reconcile the position so that it doesn't appear that you are resorting to different processes and procedures on one day and another day you are resorting to another, um, another process and procedures. So let's leave it to the uh, table officers to do the reconciliation. We have a problem. Um, the front bench of the majority 
have a problem with their uh, mic. So sometimes I struggle to hear what particularly the majority leader says. And I see he also struggles to hear what I say. I have called on the technical people to work on it, but it looks like there's still no improvement. Um, he almost repeated exactly what I said, and I've really directed the table office to look at it, whether the issue of consistency they raised, it happened. But I don't recollect, like the majority leader also says, he, has, he doesn't recollect that. So cross check on that and let's get what is right. But the right position is that the reasons for suspension should not be stated. Honorable members, page 12. Uh, let, let's listen to a, a different voice now before Honorable Ablakwa. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, item 1 on page 12, the last of item 1, where I say that of the ECOWAS identification card registration into bracket Ghana card. I don't know if there is anything called Ghana card. Even a card that we use that has been given to us is ECOWAS identification card and not Ghana card. I don't know where the, we've captured it. We are always capturing Ghana card, Ghana card. Even when the electoral commissioner came yesterday, in her report she stated Ghana card. Is a card Ghana card or national identification card, you know, or ECOWAS card? Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. Well, right now, Speaker, I very much appreciate the concern raised by Honorable Bajra, uh, except to add that the Ghana card technology has become quite a popular refrain. That has become the other name for the, officially is the ECOWAS identification card. But uh, on the streets, in our constituencies, everybody you know, popularly refers to it as a Ghana card, Ghana card. So I think that once it has been put in brackets, after the actual name, the official name, I, I think we can let it pass, just for clarity that we are referring to, 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 the, to the Ghana card. I, I do not think that uh, it really hurts. Once the ECOWAS identification card has been properly captured, I think we can we can let it pass if 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 Honourable Bejua doesn't mind. Thank you, Right on we speak up for the opportunity. If you look at the same page, sure, paragraph one, three ministries were invited. In other words, three bodies were invited: the Electoral Commission, NIA, and the Finance Ministry. Paragraph 2 captures the attendees well, but in paragraph 1, the Minister of Finance is surprisingly missing. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to differ from what uh, my colleague Honourable Okujeto said. This is a house of records. And I'm sure whatever we do must appropriately capture uh, 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 any official titles accorded. Is we must not for the sake of compliance. We have popular misconceptions. Something that is popular is not necessarily true or right. I think there's a distinction between that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I say this conscious of the fact that legal issues have cropped up uh, sometimes along the line. I used to remember some years ago we had a cigarette called 555. But the popular name was 5-5. The matter uh, went to court in respect of that matter. And the one who was dealing with 5-5 lost because the real name was 5-5-5. So, Mr. Speaker, I think the name it should be captured appropriately as it has been uh, 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 labeled so that we don't, we don't have any uh, uh, offense 
dealing with it in there. Mr. Speaker, it's better for me to uh, prevent you from holding my hand than me, for me to use my strength to wrench myself free. I think that if it's possible to do what is proper before we are taken to task on it, it's better for us. Thank you. Yes, Majority Leader. Speaker, the that we all hold bears the inscription ECOWAS passports. <laughs> but it is referred to as a Ghana passport. Anyway. In this particular case, the law recognizes it. The technology Ghana card. If you look at the instrument, section, section 1 of LI 2111, it's captured there that is, um, is to be known as Ghana card. Ghana card in brackets. So if it is done that way and it's captured in brackets, it's the same thing. The law so recognizes it. So it's not just the technology in the streets. The law recognizes it. Yes, Prof. Well, I will speak uh, Thanks for the clarity uh, being brought to the matter by our revered leader. I also want to find out from you if the CI is 2023 or 2022. Thank you. Because it is captured here uh, on the third line, uh, the National Education Authority on the Drug Public Elections into brackets, registration of voters population in 2023. I thought that we've been dealing with this since last year. I don't know whether it is 2022 or 2023. Thank you. Actually, you haven't seen the draft yet. They have it. I, have, I haven't seen it. I got a, a box in which was allowed to be copies of the draft. I didn't open it. It was referred to the clerk's office to reply to the uh, Electoral Commission. So I don't know whether the year written there is 2022 or 2023. I think the table office, uh, the, the table office is in a better position to clarify this, whether it's 2022 or 2023. Yes, please. Mr. Speaker, as you do know, the, there was an attempt to introduce this in the House last year. So it bears 2022. However, as we do know of constitutional instruments and of all regulations, the date will come after the date of Gazette. And the date of Gazette is what then will carry, ultimately. So that is what it is. So for now, the draft before us is 2022. And to the extent that it may be approved in 2023, thereafter, when it is introduced in the House, as the Constitution provides, the Speaker, with respect, Articles 11, 7, that um, any other rule or regulation made by person or authority under a power conferred by this Constitution, or the other shall, and she says, come into force at the expiration of 31 sitting days that have been so laid unless Parliament, um, sorry, I should have read the, <laughs> um, it shall be laid before Parliament, be published in the Gazette on the day it is laid before Parliament. So when it is laid, that date then would describe the instrument. But for now, what you have is the draft, which is Yes. <coughs> right, Mr. Speaker, please, I also want to add that the report of the Special Budget Committee, a copy of which I have here, which is the basis which recommended that we should have a committee of the whole further pre-laying deliberations to invite the relevant institutions, NIA, the Electoral Commission, and then the Finance Minister, in their recommendations. The Speaker, that report, which formed the basis for the further engagement we have been having, refers 
to the draft CI as the, the constitutional instrument public election, registration of voters regulations 2022. 2022. So I will suggest, if it pleases you, Mr. Speaker, that what we should be working with should be what is contained in this report, the special budget report, which is the draft CI 2022. In that case, we need to amend what is here. Uh, the 2023 should be 2022, since that is what we are working with, the recommendation from the Special Budget Committee. Well, the Special Budget Committee was written in the last meeting. The agenda for this meeting actually captures it as 2023. It says draft public elections registration of voters regulations 2023. You look at the agenda of business for this meeting. I think that's what the table office is following. As I said, the instrument is not yet before the house. And so when it comes, we we'll definitely get the correct rendition of the title of the instrument. So let's leave it as it is, and then we can proceed. With this, we move on to page. Honorable member. Madam Speaker, I, I, I do understand the explanation uh, you offered. But in that case, is it also possible that since you are not uh, sure of which dates we have to use, to leave it open? This is a suggestion I'm just uh, proposing or want to find out. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, I think it's clearly explained that we, we know the day that we are working on. In fact, when it is gazetted, that's when the date will be determined. But now we are working on it 2023. So your explanation is that we leave it as it is. So there isn't a question of whether we know the date or not. We know that we are working on it this year. And the Speaker has ruled that we leave it uh, 2023. And I think, Mr. Speaker, that should be okay. Yes, please. <clears throat> right on, Mr. Speaker. I noticed that you wanted to move on from page 12. But uh, my honorable colleague raised a matter which I also intended to raise uh, earlier. Uh, which relates to the guests we had at the Committee of the Whole. Yes. It yes, was uh, yes, yes. briefing from three entities, NIEC and the Finance Minister, to give assurances on financing of the uh, NIA cards. Uh, so, the Speaker, the way it's been captured here is as though our guests were two. Uh, even though I note that the Finance Minister has been uh, stated at paragraph 2, 2i, two that he was in attendance. I, I, I think he, uh, he, he, he did more than just being in attendance. He was written to, to appear before us and to give assurances. So if we could amend paragraph 1 to reflect what was uh, your directive, that these three uh, entities, that is the Ministry of Finance, the National Education Authority and the Electoral Commission appear before uh, the Committee of the Whole. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member, thanks for the reminder. I think our attention was drawn to it earlier. Uh, table of his kindly insert the Ministry of Finance as a third institution that was invited to appear before the House and the Committee of the Whole. Page 13. Yes. Right, Mr. Speaker, please, item number XVII at page 13. Mrs. Ekuya Chinebua Asari, uh, head of portfolio, uh, the spelling of portfolio, the T is missing. Mr. Speaker, if uh, portfolio can be corrected so that we would have. Head of Portfolio Management, 
identity management systems. I'm grateful, Mr. Speaker. Yes, table office kindly do the right thing. Please correct it accordingly. Page 14. Oh, sorry. We are adjourned at page 13. Please, honorable members, the votes and proceedings of Tuesday, 28 February 2023, are adopted as a true record of proceedings subject to the corrections. We will move on to official reports. I have a copy of the official report of 19th July 2022, that is on Tuesday. Any corrections? Yes, on our black one. I'm grateful, right to my speaker. Right to my speaker, please, at column 24. The third paragraph, uh, my statement on uh, Nelson Mandela International Day, I refer to Oliver Tambo. The third paragraph, Oliver Tambo, has been captured wrongly. Uh, uh, what is here, Oliver Tambe, uh, doesn't exist. It should be Oliver Tambo. Uh, I'm is that the third, third paragraph, right? Yes, please, the third paragraph. The fifth line of the third paragraph. Yes. Oliver Tambo, not Tambe. Please, table office, take note of that. Yes. Honorable Speaker, respectfully, I'm holding the same official report, but what I'm holding doesn't have columns 21 and 22. I don't know whether it is only mine or others also have the same problem and also no columns 35 and 36. Sorry? I think it's your copy because I have all. Oh, then I'm, I'm unlucky. Yes, please kindly get a change of your copy. Honorable members, any further amendments? Any corrections? Honorable members, the official report of Tuesday, 19th July 2022, as corrected, is hereby adopted as a true record of proceedings. Honorable members, we have in our midst. a distinguished delegation from the West African Regional Parliamentarians Forum, and they are here on a visit. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the members of this delegation who are here on an academic program. They are here, among other things, to discuss roles of both parliamentarians and defense and security officials in oversight, accountability, and outreach processes. The program is further intended to create a platform for networking between honorable members of this House and their West African counterparts with the aim of deepening relations. Honorable members, please.
there are actually about 70 of them in the country and some are in the public gallery but we have some of them seated at the distinguished guest gallery i can only introduce those at the distinguished visitors gallery but forgive me if I'm able to read the names of all the 70 members of the delegation. But to my left, you can see them at the public gallery. I hope leadership is listening. So I start with those at the Distinguished Visitors Gallery. And the first is Honorable Mahmoudou Lamin Diallo. He's the Vice President, the Vice President National Assembly of Senegal. We have Honorable Suleiman Sahu the Member of Parliament for the Gambia. Yeah. Honorable Kadidia Tadiello, the Member of Parliament for Mauritania. Yeah. Honorable Issa Flumina Ferrara Suarez da Costa, the Member of Parliament for, well, we say Cape Verde. But here is Capo Verde. Then we have Honorable Sahar Joanna, the Chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on Defense and Security of Senegal. We have Ms. Amanda Dory. She is the Director. ACSS. And we have Honorable Munkaila Issa, President, Defense and Interior Commission of Niger. Honorable Tomin Alexia Kokuse, the Vice President of the Defense. Security Commission of Côte d'Ivoire. Yeah. Honorable Yauvi Atiebe Ihu, President of the Defense and Security Commission of Togo. Yeah. We have Mr. Kabir Adamu, Special Advisor to the President of the Senate of Nigeria. Uh, for some days now, they were having some serious elections. <laughs> All is well that ends well. We have Mr. Zie Primel Watara. He is an interpreter. To the group. And as I said, the rest of the other members are seated at the public gallery to my left. It's impor important you acknowledge their presence. And on your behalf, I want to warmly welcome all of them to the Parliament of Ghana and to wish them fruitful deliberations with the academia and also members of this house.
Honourable members, I've just been informed that the Honourable Sahir Joanna is the Chairman, Parliamentary Committee on Defence and Security of Sierra Leone, not Senegal. I'm sorry, that was what I was given. Thanks so much for the correction. How many of you know the meaning of Sierra Leone? Yes? Current affairs. How many of you know the meaning of Sierra Leone? Yes. Honorable Mama Yarga. The Lion Mountain. Lion Mountain. Correct, for three points. Yes, that's the benefit of being a member of the ECOWAS Parliament. Yes. I was saying that we send him to the ECOWAS Parliament. And of course, you should know that. If you are not known, we will draw him from Ecowas Valley. Well, I'm not too sure about you withdrawing him from that parliament. Yes. Yes, after this, go and do some research on Sierra Leone. There are a lot of things you learn about that country. Honorable members, I hope you find time to interact with the members of the delegation and establish the person-to-person -person relations, not just country-to-country -country or parliament-to-parliament. -parliament. The person-to-person -person relations are usually very important, very enduring, and more beneficial. But once again, you are most welcome. I hope you take time to go around, at least, if not the country, but the city of Accra. Once again, you are welcome. Honorable members, we now move to item five. And we will start with the the main questions which are all under item 6 to the minister not of finance but works and housing this morning, I received a letter from the Minister for Finance drawing my attention to the fact that today he will be caught up in a meeting with the delegation from the People's Republic of China. Obviously, you know the purpose for that meeting. They are here and they will be engaging the ministry from first, that is today and tomorrow, on discussions on our debt restructuring program. So the minister has to be there personally. 
He requested that we shift the questions to Friday, the 3rd of March, and I readily granted the permission. So that is the information for members. And so we'll take the questions, main questions under item six. Item six. Yes. Deputy Manuatida, any problem? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I think I cited the letter from the minister. A very, good, a very good reason why the minister is not here. And so we, we, we allow uh, the works and housing minister to start with the questions. But Mr. Speaker, as you know, this house is not impressed with the record of the Minister of Finance attendance. But we allow that letter to stand, as you know. Deputy Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, um, I know my respected colleague opposite me expects that people treat him fair in terms of choice of words. And I have taken note of his concerns about some approach in dealing with issues of disagreement. But I would beg him to withdraw the aspect of his statement, quote, this house is not impressed. If you are talking about your own impression about the minister, say so for the record. But don't let Hansa capture the phrase, this house is not impressed. This house is a house of 275 members. And I do not know of anything untoward that has been done by the finance minister to warrant this statement from you on behalf of the entire house. The minister, as courtesy demand, has written to Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker has read it out aloud and in extenso to us as a house. So I do not think the least you can do is to say that the house has not been impressed with his conduct. What did he do? Mr. Speaker, I beg that that aspect of his statement be redrawn or is expunged from the records. It's needless with the greatest respect. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the respected deputy majority leader is always not paying attention. His rise to fame is through basically twisting people's words. Mr. Speaker, I was very clear about what I said. I, I was talking about attendance. We are talking about the Minister of Finance's presence today. We have a letter that says that he's engaged, a very important engagement. I accept that. But I said, this house, and of course, I was speaking in terms of this side of the house, is not impressed with his attendance. What is wrong with that? So, Mr. Speaker, I don't withdraw that statement because that is what I believe in. If he has a problem with that, he can just modify that statement. But that is what we believe, that his attendance in this house is not impressive. But that is not to say that today's absence has not been justified. Yes. Mr. Speaker. He who comes to equity must first do equity and must come with clean hands. You see, the deputy minority leader is a very sensitive person who is sensitive to words. Now you're saying that a statement that you boldly made that this house is now being qualified or modified to mean your side of the house. If that is what you meant, why didn't you say so? and you are not courageous and honorable enough to accept your mistake then you now say that somebody's rise to fame is through twisting people's statement i didn't twist your statement and i would not use that to rise to any fame i don't need it i would want to earn it through hard work and merit so with the greatest respect it is your statement that i sought to get you to clarify the honorable minister of finance 
is a human being like you, a Ghanaian like you. He is also sensitive. In any event, if your side has not been impressed by him, what has he done? Let's be fair. Let us be fair. What has the Honorable Finance Minister done that you are not impressed with? Yesterday he was with us all day. Last week he was here. If, if, let's, let's, let's be fair. What did he do that you would describe as he has not been attending to Parliament? And you are sensitive. You see, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker was on my feet. Resume your seat. Resume was your seat. on my feet. Colleagues, get up. Will not speak to the mic. At least it is only fair that you listen to me. And if you disagree, you catch Mr. Speaker's side. But Mr. Speaker, it's not about the talking and rising and talking and talking. It doesn't help. When Honorable Amakufibo was on his feet, I kept quiet and listening to him and paid attention to him so that I would respond. That is the way we do it. So, Mr. Speaker, all I'm saying is that the statement made against the Honorable Finance Minister is uncalled for. Two, it is unfair to his reputation because this is Hansa. 30 years, 40 years from now, students of jurisprudence would pick it, students of history would pick it, and it would be unfair for them to read that the finance minister fails when the need arises for him to attend upon this house. That is not correct. And I therefore submit again, Mr. Speaker, that for the purpose of fairness, that aspect of his submission, which has now been qualified to mean this side of the house is not impressed, and going further to say that the man does not attend upon the house, be withdrawn. And if he so chooses, he should apologize. If he doesn't, it's up to him. Honorable Dr. Zaneto. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I was rising to uh, make a, an, a, a point of order, which was to mention the fact that if we are actually speaking with regards to the order is uh, 92. I beg your pardon. Yes, anyway. <laughs> order 92 2 which says that it shall be out of order to use offensive, abusive, insulting, blasphemous, or unbecoming words, or to impute improper motives to any other member, or to make personal allusions. The uh, Deputy Majority Leader, in rising to make, a, um, to make a point about the minority, Deputy Minority um, Leader, also mentioned the fact that um, he was not courageous enough, and I do not feel that it was not appropriate. I feel it was inappropriate to actually go down that tangent, given the fact that that was exactly the point he was trying to raise on the order which he rose in the first place. Honorable right, members, this house cannot function without cooperation and consensus building. And so when members get up to speak, that should be uppermost in your mind. And therefore your language must respect your colleagues. Very important. The deputy minority leader made a statement. The deputy majority leader took an issue of it. He has come back to clarify that the use of the phrase the house meant this side of the house. That is the clarification. Then he also went down to say he was talking about attendance. That is this house has a problem with the attendance of the Minister of Finance. It is right for the Deputy Majority Leader to contest that. But please, in the exchanges, respect each other. Because that is your impression. That is your view. And we cannot take that away from either of you. We will allow you to express it. That's free speech. 
And here, you are immune. There is immunity. Nobody can sue you for what you say on the floor of this house. The limitations are just a few. That's why we are using the term immunity, not privilege. Immunity, you are immune. And so please, when you are expressing your opinions and your views, do that in decent, decorous, respectful language. Please, Deputy Majority Leader, you know this issue has been hanging on for some time. And the minority leadership has made it clear that you are one of the problems that they face here. I thought that direct statement would have made you change your discourse. But yesterday, when I gave you another opportunity, what you said fueled the situation. I want to urge you to move away from it. Deputy Majority Leader, you are my son, a dear son to me. I want you to move away from it. But the case is that before members took issue with the attendance of the Minister of Finance to this house, the Minister has since then improved on attendance. And in fact, he comes to sit here from morning till night, particularly. Honorable members, are you challenging the speaker? I have always told you, monkey play by sizes. So you can play with each other, but not with the speaker. I say monkey play by sizes. Yes, so please, please, let's acknowledge that the Minister for Finance has improved on his record and has been attending any time we invite him. In fact, he wrote to me explaining why he was absent. You have accepted that explanation. So let's move on. For how many days now, the minister has been with us from morning till night. And you know the pressure at the Ministry of Finance, particularly this time. So we should acknowledge that. We should acknowledge that. Is it budget time? Not yet. I want us to move on. Senior Prefect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker. We are particularly happy you talk about the sizes of the monkeys and the way they move together. Um, Mr. Speaker, you, you make the point that uh, the deputy majority leader may well be a problematic issue that our colleagues have referred to. Mr. Speaker, you also the same way make the point that there must be mutual respect in this house. Look at, is it right for an honorable member on that side to castigate the honorable deputy leader by suggesting that his rise to power has been influenced by, uh, to fame, power, fame, has been uh, uh, influenced or has been uh, piggybacked by his ability to contort and distort the views of other people to, to, to gain uh, fame or to gain influence. Mr. Speaker, that could be as... Hon as Honourable Member, I didn't hear that. His rise to fame... That, that is the point. That is why we actually triggered this argument. That his rise to fame, it depended... But I use the word piggyback. But I think he said, has been uh, predicated by his ability Speaker, to twist other people's views and facts to suit the occasion. That is why his reason to fame or his reason to influence. That is what the minority uh, uh, deputy, uh, deputy leader said. Mr. Speaker, well, of course you are here. Mr. Speaker, can I complete? Mr. Please, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you have been in this house Mr. Speaker, with the, the big boys like us for many years that the Speaker, you can recall. This house, Mr. Speaker, is disintegrating. 
a chase. The leader, there's so much shouting, there's so much animosity, no room for terrorists, Mr. Speaker, in this house. We will not be used to this. People get upset because this time troops are thrown all over the place, and Mr. Speaker, the whole place breaks out into insanity. It isn't right, Mr. Speaker. But I'm happy today, Mr. Speaker, you made the point. Monkeys play by sizes, and so people should learn to play their role. My, 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 he's laughing. He, he, he's, he knows his role. Look at that is the point. Let's try and introduce some sanity. Sometimes the speaker sit here, and I got completely distressed. For all these years, the speaker, you were here then. That we haven't observed this. And now, the speaker, I've invented two, almost two weeks. I'm sitting here. They say they won't approve me, so I'm sitting here. Look at all of this. But I made my point. I mean, I made my point. Mr. Speaker, so, so, Mr. Speaker, I think I, I, would, I would invite you to ask the Honorable Deputy Minority Leader, Mr. Speaker, to speak to the point. Withdraw it. I am not saying that whether he, if he cares, he should apologize. But withdraw and Mr. Speaker, apologize to the Honorable Member and to the House. It affronts the dignity of this house. It affronts the dignity of the leadership of this house. Mr. Speaker, these are my comments. Please, please, honorable members, this morning I raised the issue of the difficulty of us seated here, hearing the submissions of the leaders. It's very difficult for us to get because your mics seem to have some challenges. So I didn't hear that the deputy minority leader made some statements to that effect. I want to hear from him now whether what the Honorable Katie Hammond said is true of your submissions this morning. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I rose again to basically say that what I stated earlier that Honorable Femi Maki was tracing it because, as you correctly stated, I was making reference to the minister's no, 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 please. Absence. I just want to know what you said. What I said was that he was uh, Honorable Afenyo Maki was tracing my words. His rise to that, fame and that his rose to fame was about tracing words of people, and I was using exactly what he did as an example. Yes. Exactly what he did. But Mr. Speaker, let me make a larger point. Mr. Speaker, for the last three weeks let me finish, since I've been here, let me finish with this issue. Mr. Speaker, let me deal with this. Please, one. please, 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 please. It's unfair. It's unfair to say that the honourable deputy majority leader's rise to fame is based on his twisting and turning of what people say. That definitely is unfair. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I respectfully will draw that. But, Mr. Speaker, let me state something. The Honorable Afenyo Maki, the Honorable Afenyo Maki will have the courage to tell me, Honorable Kofi Bua, a four-term member of parliament who has worked 20 years in the corporate world, who has served as deputy minister properly vetted, Served as a minister of state, that I don't have the courage. I am a courageous man. That's why I've served this country so honorably. I've even been a deputy minister in this country since I've been here. You, Actually, honorable members, we don't, we don't, honorable deputy minority leader, we don't appoint deputy ministers or ministers of things based on their courage. So that one is not a good basis to say that 
because you serve as a duty minister and minister of state, you have courage. Courage is something else. Too. The bigger is courage and honor. Intelligence is, uh, as the name suggests, is uh, intelligence uh, arising from the use of machines, smart machines, uh, computers, to do what what human beings would otherwise be doing. We need to have data. We need to begin to know the importance of keeping data, and uh, uh, AI and through data analytics and machine learning will analyze this data and come up and aid decision-making process. People who have not uh, invested in training to migrate from the traditional way of doing things will lose their jobs. As works are being lost, there are new jobs being created. So as you are moving from, let's say, the amazing stage, you can learn something new that has to do with AI, so let's say 3D printing. Showing on March 3, 2023 on Ghana Web TV. Yes, Minister. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. The China Sandy Road is a classified 13 kilometer interdistrict road connecting the Buza North Municipality to the Kasenan Nankana West District of the Upper East Region. This is an engineered interdistrict gravel surface road in fair condition. The, speaker, the bridge in question. It's a 10 cell cover with varying dimensions located at Janet 8 plus 950 Sandima. The covert has lost its structural integrity and is gradually caving in. The municipal assembly has been advised to take the necessary steps to block motors from plying the road to save lives and properties. Currently, Mr. Speaker, there is no program on the drainage structure. But the future program, Mr. Speaker, is that the Department of Feeder Road has carried out an assessment on the drainage structure. It had recommended a four number four by three meter bus culvert to replace the existing structure. The works will be considered under the emergency funding of the Ministry of Roads and Highways under the 2023 budget. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member, any supplementary? Um, <clears throat> yes, Mr. Speaker. I... Honorable Member, second Deputy Speaker to take the chair.
presumption. Yes, yeah, honorable member, let's hear you for your supplementary question. <laughs> well, well. We thank you for the suspension if you, you claim to be suspended. So, honorable member, let's hear you for your supplementary question. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want the minister to understand that is the only rule. I'm saying that I just want you to understand that is the only rule leading from China to Saint Denis. There are others, but they are very long, and that rule is regular. And what is happening is that you can't prevent the people from passing there. Bigger vehicles cannot pass there. So I just wish. You do your best to see how best to fix it for us. That's my view. Thank you. Yes, honorable minister. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, all the honorable member is saying is quite true. It's a critical road. And even if you look at the covert, the covert is a 10 cell covert. That should tell you that it is a major, if you let me use the, the word bridge, it's a major bridge crossover. You know, for a covert to have as many as 10 cells already suggests that. Is a major structure. And even the replacement that we want to make, we want to do as many as four in number, but with a wider diameter to replace it. But before that is done, prevent imminent danger to protect life and property. We have advised that road should be closed. And where the covert is, it's a feeder road. But there is the main highway which used as a diversion. You know, if you follow the uh, Tichuka road and you turn on the right, you know, heading towards Tumu, to China. No, that highway can be used. No, whilst we work on the road. That is why we have asked the the municipal assembly you know, to take that step because it is within that locality. But I can tell you that we are taking action on it under this year's budget, twenty twenty. And we are treating it as an emergency uh, project because of its importance. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, I'm back. Yeah, right. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I understand the minister very well. But normally, when you give the directives to the original men, it's really a problem. So please, is there any way? They can assure me that before the rain is done, because that is the danger that is the danger we have when the rains come. That something will be done on the holy appeal. Thank you. Yes, Minister. Yes, Mr. Speaker, it's true we have to take advantage of the current dry season to deal with this matter. Because where we have the COVID, you know, as at now, it has dried up, but it's a river channel. So as soon as it starts raining, it will even impede our effort to place the, the, the COVID. You know, because any time water is running through such a COVID, 
if you want to start the course, you have to divert the, the course. So it stands to reason that we take advantage of this dry season to work on it. I thank you. Thank you very much. We now turn to the normal questions. And we will begin with question 4A2. Question 4A2. A member for Ho Central, Honorable Benjamin Pudu. Honorable, you may ask the question now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to ask the Minister for Roads and Highways what steps the Ministry is taking to reconstruct the road from Sokode Bogame through Akrofu to Bame. Well, there is a mistake here. They put Ho West, but Ho Central to Ho West constituencies. Yes, Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Sokode Gami to Bami Road, known as R95, is located in the whole West District in the Volta region. The total of the road is 12 kilometers. The road is partly graveled and partly bituminous surface test. Currently, Mr. Speaker, there is no major periodic program on the road. The road is, however, being maintained under the routine maintenance program. And the future program is that the Ghana Highway Authority will carry out engineering studies in the second quarter of 2023 and submit the estimates for consideration and approve. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, I'm not going to any supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, this road runs across two constituencies from Ho Center and crosses to Ho West. And currently, the so called Bogam road to Ho is being done. I want to find out from the minister whether he will consider a variation so that the present contractor on the so called to Ho route will take that up and reconstruct it. Because the road is very, very narrow, and even this said periodic maintenance is not going on. And there is a very strong agitation, especially from the people of uh, Akrofo. Yes, Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I like to thank my colleague for the admission that at least one part watching is being worked on. My answer indicated that even though we are not performing periodic maintenance on this road, on this stretch, however, routine maintenance is going on. And we have three contractors uh, being appointed to carry that out. And I can give you the name of the contractors. One is uh, Bumicon Investment Limited, who is carrying out the sessional repair between Soko and Bami under Lot 4. And under Lot 5, we have given to the same contractor because he is doing well. 
and we also have Strive Investment Limited undertaking the routine maintenance under Lot 6. But if the first co-contractor is performing, yes, your advice could be taken. And since he is on the road, if the others are not performing, we can resort to uh, evaluation orders to make sure that at least we maintain the road you know, uh, routinely until uh, the end of the year, when we get the full estimates, then we start working on the periodic maintenance on that road. Because our intention is to build the road properly and to bring it to bituminous level because this is a very important road in the region. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, well. We turn to question 713. Seven, Honorable Member for Medina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sosu is, is not here, and he has asked me to um, ask the question on his behalf. Which only is there a question that is not here, and therefore you are asking the question, or is giving you the authority? Yes, he's giving me the authority with your leave, Mr. Speaker, to ask the question. Honorable Member for Adanse, yes, do the you can do as a person. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. I rise to ask the Minister for Roads and Highways when work on the Ayi Mensa and Amfa Road would commence. Thank you. Very well, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Speaker, a human sent to Danfa Road is identified on Department of Federal Roads Road Database as a human sent far to Amrahia Federal Road, which is 10.5 kilometer long and located in the La Nkwanta to Medina, La Nkwanta 9 Medina Municipality of the Greater Accra region. It is an engineered road with distressed bituminous surface and thus in poor condition. Currently, Mr. Speaker, contract for the upgrading of the road was awarded under the project type upgrading to bituminous surfacing of a human sound to Danfa to Amrahia Feeder Road, 7.2 kilometers, and Otinibi Junction to Utinibi Town itself, 3.3 kilometers. The contract was awarded on 13th August 2020 and commenced on 21st September 2020 for completion by 20th September 2021. The works have since stopped. Warning letters were issued to the contractor to go back to site. But this has proved futile. The contract has been recommended for termination. So, Speaker, the future program for this road is that engineering studies will be conducted on the road during the first quarter of 2023 this year for upgrading after the termination. The execution of the works will be considered. The 2024 budget. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Honorable Member for New has any supplementary question on behalf of Medina MP? Very well. So we turn to question 733. 733. It stands in the name of a member for Y East. Honorable Godfrey Sedu. Are you also his attorney? Yes, Mr. Speaker, he is 
out of the country, but I have his authority to ask him from you to ask the question. Okay, let's hear it. To arise to ask the Minister for Roads and Highways, when works on the following roads in the WA East District will continue and be completed. Wa, Logo, Jeiri, Tosa, Bulenga, Duse, Grumbile, and Bulenge, Chago, Talwana, Talwana. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I will respond in that order. First, Wa Logu Jiri to Tosa. Mr. Speaker, this feeder road is 50.6 kilometer long. It is an engineered interdistrictal road from the Wa municipality to is district of the Upper West Region. It is a gravel stroke earth surface road in poor condition. Currently, Mr. Speaker, contract for the upgrading of the first 10 kilometers of the road was awarded under the project titled Upgrading of Bituminous Surfacing Road to Logu Fida Road. The contract was awarded on 23rd August 2016 and commenced on 13th October 2016 for completion by 12th October 2018. The contractor abandoned the site on 15th March 2019. A final warning dated 5th April 2019 was issued to the contractor to go back to site to continue and complete the work but has since proved future. The contract has been recommended for termination. The program for this road is to Gumbele Road. Mr. Speaker, and is identified on the Department of Federal Roads database as Olinga Duse Rumbele Federal Road, which is 40 kilometers long. It is an engineered federal road in the East District of the Upper West Region. It is a grass road, earth surface road, also in position, and currently there is no program on the road. Engineering studies were conducted on 24th November 2021 on the road for rehabilitation. The execution of the works will be considered under the 2024 budget as our future program. Three, Bolinga to Gagu to Governor Road. Mr. Speaker, this FIDA road is also identified in the Department of FIDA Roads database as Bolinga Chagu to Don Fia Junction to Don Yokula, which is 28 kilometer long. It is an engineered road in poor condition, and Don Fia Junction to Don Fia Talawuna is 20 kilometer long and unengineered feeder road in poor condition. They are located in the Wa East District of the Upper West Region. There is no problem this road currently, but the future arrangement is that, Mr. Speaker, uh, engineering studies were conducted on 24 November 2021 on the road for rehabilitation. 
the execution of the works will be considered under the 2024 budget. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Honorable <coughs> people, any supplementary question? Thank you, Mr. The Speaker, the Bulenga, sorry, the Wa Mogu Jayuri Tosa Road. I've listened to the Minister's answer. I want to thank him, but to suggest to him that there is something definitely wrong that a contractor was warned the same year he abandoned the job, 2019. Now, between 2019 and this time, it's about getting to four years. Is it because you are so lenient to the contractor or there is no further will to finish the project? The speaker. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the face of the document and on the face of the answer, that assessment would be made. And the ministry cannot be so lenient with any contractor who is not performing. Neither is it due to absence of political the political will for government is that it's been equal. All roads in this country should be co constructed. At uh, times, if you come face to face with such problems, there are difficulties. And I must be honest with you that as much as the tree will terminate contracts and do whatever we have to do under the contractual arrangement to make sure the road is done. Yes, uh, contractual arrangement is always between parties, and here is between the employer and the contractor, and the employer is government. At times, we have a number of such cases because the contractors who claim that they have not been paid. Sometimes we see that some contractors don't have capacity, so it goes first and, and forward. No. So uh, the point I can make in this regard is that, yes, it's one of many such problems that we are handling, and now a definite action has been taken, as is contained in the answer. We have carried, carried out engineering studies on this road now, and we are sure that it will take part of the 2024 budget, of course, which will be taken before the close of this year in November. So the political will is there to get this road. I thank you. The speaker, I want to thank the minister. He's been one of the few ministers who have consistently come here to answer questions. And I, we, we acknowledge his efforts. But this district is a new district, relatively. It has not got any single road tied between the district and any of the, district, the, the towns in the, from the center. No one single road that is tied. And I want to urge the minister to consider at least tying one of the roads that link the district to one, at least one. So we can, uh, you know, we can be confident that, yeah. So, okay. So, Mr. Minister, I want, you, I want an assurance from you. Minister, he wants assurance from you. Mr. Speaker, thank you, and I thank my colleague for his kind words. And I want to assure him that it's not an impossible request at all. 
uh, is something within within the means of the ministry, and it will be done as much as possible. It will be done. Thank you. Well, well, honourable members, we turn to page four, question eight six five. Question eight six five, and the question stands in the name of a member for New Adibiasi. Honourable. Adam Abdul Salam. Yes, honourable member. Thank you. you ask your question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to ask the Minister for Roads and Highways the progress of work on the construction of the Menan Junction to Dotum Road. Thank you. Yes, honourable minister. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Menan Junction to the Tom Federal Road is 15 kilometers long. It is located in the Adansi south of the Ashanti region. It is a gravel road in fair condition. It is an engineered access road. Currently, Mr. Speaker, Contract for the rehabilitation of the road was awarded under the project titled Rehabilitation of Menan Junction to Menan to Dutton Federal Road. And as aforementioned, measuring 15 kilometers. The contract was awarded on 7 February 2020 and commenced on 20th and 24 completion by 19th May 2021. The works have since been completed. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Honorable member, any further question? Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. So, Speaker, um, I acknowledge the fact that some work has been done on the road since 2020, as the minister indicated. But, uh, um, the commuters of that road and the communities along the road will be very sad to hear that work has been completed. Because, Mr. Speaker, the road is back to its deplorable state. And the expectation was that um, the road was going to be upgraded to at least between us level. I want to ask the minister if there are any plans to upgrade the road to a between us level uh, surface. Uh, just to avoid a total deterioration of the road. Okay. Yes, Honorable Minister. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, just as I indicated in my answer, the job was awarded to Westin, a company called Westin Link Limited. And per the schedule and per the scope of works given to the contractor, the work was fully completed, 100%. Yes, you are making a request that it should be brought to the terminal's level. Okay. That is a periodic activity, and that will be considered uh, of, depending upon availability of funds, so it will be considered. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member, we move to Salaga South. Yeah. Okay, let me give you the last. last. <laughs> yes, Mr. Speaker, I, I wanted an assurance, because this is a important road. If the Minister says, um, uh, it, will be con it will be considered subject to availability of funds. Um, that's, that's big. Um, could you assure us that in the 24 budget, this road will be captured and it will be upgraded to a bituminous space? Thank you. The Minister, he wants assurance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my answer constituted an assurance, but punctuated with a caveat. I uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Now we come to Saraga South. Honorable Ibrahima Zuara. Honorable. Thank you, you have Mr. Speaker. Now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to ask the Minister for Roads and Highways the status of the Salaga to Bimbila Road and when the road will be completed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Salaga Bimbila Road, measuring 71 kilometers, forms part of the original road R029. The road traverses the Salaga and Bimbila municipalities. It is a gravel road in good condition. 12 kilometers has been promised whilst the remaining is under construction. Currently, Mr. Speaker, contract for the upgrading of this road, that is from kilometer 2 to kilometer 73, constituting 71 kilometers, commenced on 29 July 2019 for completion by 28 January 2023, and was later to 27 November 2023. Work executed to date is estimated at 60% physical completion. Contractor is on site. Completion on revised date will depend on the availability of funds. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Yeah, Honorable Ibrahima, any further questions? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have only one supplementary question. The last time the minister was here to answer on roads in my constituency, he assured us that uh, the year 2023 was going to be the year of roads for Salaga South. Today, in his answer, he says the road will be completed based on the availability of funds. Can we get some concrete assurance from the minister that our roads are going to see any action, any works within this year? Thank you. Yes, Honorable Minister. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at least from my answer, one thing is so reassuring and is that the contractor has not abandoned sites. And the contractor working on the roads of honorable members' constituency is a strong one, is a strong contractor. And if she may want to know, the name of, of the contractor is New Modern World. And once the contractor is on site, I believe that we will do whatever it takes to enable him carry out the assigned works. And work is ongoing, even though I admit that it has slowed down. And part of the road has already been promised, and the contractor assured us that that section is going to be fully sealed. Mr. Speaker, the contractor is said that the work will not be abandoned, and once the work is not be, being abandoned, government will do whatever it takes to make sure that road is completed. So the stretch Salada to Bibila Road you know, is a, a, a very important uh, highway and there's no way we will allow it to uh, slow down. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. We turn to question 
responsible for roads and highways the status of works on the following roads within the BNE and 
the five constituency. Dominable number two to Nampori, Asari Su A to Nkronia, Dibieni Estate Town Rose, and finally Supreme Panta to a Trouble Rose. Thank you, right, Mamus. Yes, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I begin with Dominable Number Two to Finampoli Road. Mr. Speaker, this road is identified on Department of Federal Roads Road Database as Dominable Number Two to Abo Diabo to. Chine Freedom Road. It is a connector road which is 11.4 kilometer long. It has a poor surface condition and located in the Bibiani and Riasu Bakwai municipality of the Western North region. Currently, Mr. Speaker, contract for the upgrading of the road was awarded under the project title upgrading of bitumen surfacing of Dominobo 2 to Abodiabo to Chini Federal Road measuring 11.4 kilometers. The contract was awarded on until February 2020 and commenced on 10 June 2020 for completion by 9 October 2021. The contractor executed works in 11.4 kilometers of clearing and for the work stored after completed clearing and formation of the road. The contractor abandoned the site and warning letter has been issued to the contractor to resume work. The response of the contractor is being monitored to enable a determination of the future of the contract by the end of the first quarter of 2023 to Asawinso A to Nkronua Road. Mr. Speaker, this road is identified on the Department of FIDA Road Database as Asawinso Mrewa to Nkronua FIDA Road. It is an interdistrict FIDA Road which is 21 kilometer long. The road has a poor surface condition and located in the Bibiani and Yasu Bakwai municipality of the Western North region. Currently, Mr. Speaker, contract for the upgrading of the road was awarded in three phases under the project title upgrading of bitumen surfacing of Sarinso Mrewa to Nkronia Federal Road Phase 1 from kilometer zero to kilometer seven and upgrading to be two minutes surfacing of Asamienso Mrewa to Kronia Fida Road phase two that's from kilometer seven to kilometer fourteen that's measuring seven kilometers. The contracts were awarded on seventeenth March twenty twenty and commence of 27 May 2024 completion by 20 May 2021. The contract for the upgrading to be two
Artificial intelligence, is, uh, as the name suggests, is uh, intelligence uh, arising from the use of machines, smart machines, uh, computers, to do what, what human beings would otherwise be doing. We need to have data. We need to begin to know the importance of keeping data. And uh, uh, AI, and through data analytics and machine learning, will analyze this data and come up and aid decision-making process. People who have not uh, invested in training to migrate from the traditional way of doing things will lose their jobs. As works are being lost, there are new jobs being created. So as you are moving from, let's say, the amazing stage, you can learn something new that has to do with AI, so let's say 3D printing. Showing on March 3, 2023 on Ghana Web TV. This week on E Forum. I remember we brought Mamedo on stage after so many years, mm -hmm. and then after we can't just watch her and say that we were in front of the loss, so we are yeah. going So we had to go and look for money to pay everybody. We, we, we paid everyone. So we finished, we were only like um, about 40,000. And then the little that we had at the gate also, we had to use that one to pay sound and other things as well. So we were left to like 200 or 150, I remember very well. And that was the money that we had to share between us. It was a tragedy because mm -hmm. you see, you are the producer mm -hmm. and you also play the lead. You yeah. know, like it's, it's, it's the two of us, we are, we are playing the lead. So, before even the play starts, you know, you are just fine to see whether you get open the auditorium. Mm -hmm. so just imagine you have invested so much money, you are playing the lead, and you just look into the auditorium and there are like 50 or right, right, I, just, I just peeped <laughs> the end of the show. I, I think it was, was one of the biggest mistake in my life. I shouldn't have looked into the territory to see everything before. So I looked and then I went off my I forgot you I forgot your eyes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> because you know like you're and I told you I was like hey Minnie I go cow <laughs> E Forum S this and every Friday on Ghana Web TV. Now oh me back can of cray Susu San Quine be I want to Nambi I man in quite be brave Mommy, you face you can see my cotoso. The bugger. Send you this cup from Lemon and Finance. While Brian did a shake and let me do pounds. Lemon and Finance. Say, say, you're sending money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I am something. I get instant. Time is being. I still wait in this year. I get on. We sum a promo code Dr. Like it. Nanya ten pound ten dollars and a ten Canadian dollars for a first transaction. Would you send this guy a coffee? Download to Lemonade Finance. Artificial intelligence is uh, as the name suggests, is uh, intelligence uh, arising from the use of machines, smart machines, uh, computers, to do what what human beings would otherwise be doing. We need to have data. We need to begin to know the importance of keeping data. And uh, uh, AI and through data analytics and machine learning will analyze this data and come up and aid decision-making process. People who have not uh, invested in training to migrate from the traditional way of doing things will lose their jobs. As works are being lost, there are new jobs being created. So as you are moving from, let's say, the amazing stage, you can learn something new that has to do with AI, so let's say 3D printing. Showing on March 3, 2023 on Ghana Web TV. This week on E Forum. I remember we brought Mamedo on stage after so many years. Mm -hmm. And then after, we can't just watch her and say that we were in front of the loss. So we had yeah. to, so to go and look for money to pay everybody. We, we, we paid everyone. So we finished, we were only like um, about 40,000. And then the little that we had at the gate also, we had to use that one to pay sound and other things as well. So we were left to like 200 or 150, I remember very well. And that was the money that we had to share between us. It was a tragedy because mm -hmm. you see, you are the producer mm -hmm. and you also play the lead. You yeah. know, like it's, it's, it's the two of us, we are, we are playing the lead. 
So before even the day starts, you know, you are just fine to see whether you get open your tutorial. Mm-hmm. So just imagine you have invested so much money, you are playing the lead, and you just look into the tutorial, and there are like 50 or right, right I, just, I just peeped <laughs> the end of the show. I, I think it was one of the biggest mistakes in my life. I shouldn't have looked inside the tutorial to see everything before. So I looked and then I went off my. I forgot. You I forgot, forgot your eyes. <laughs> E Forum S this and every Friday on Ghana Web TV. Now oh back can cray. Susu sang pine. Be I want to be a man in quite be brave. Mommy, you fish you can see my cut so the poga. Send you missing come from lemon and finance. Wa Brian did a shake and let me do pounds. Lemonade finance. She said you're sending money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I have something at your instant charge is being I think waiting in so yeah. We should be promo code Dr. Like Nigga 10 pounds, 10 dollars, and 10 Canadian dollars. The first transaction with the Sandy Cigar Acofino, download to Lemonade Finance. Welcome to Best Tech on Ghana Web TV with me, Maoli Aholimega. On this edition, we'll go on a brief tour at a tech job fair where we'll look at some innovative products that are on display. Before I introduce my guest, I'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back from that break on Best Tech. I have here with me Mr. Ambrosiana, and he is from IDEC Digital. We're going to be talking about Open AI, which is artificial intelligence. Mr. Ena, welcome to Bistec. How are you? Thank you, thank you. I'm I'm privileged. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been hearing. You're yeah, welcome. Yeah. So we've been have, hearing so much about this AI, artificial intelligence. What exactly is it, and how can we leverage on AI in in, in Ghana here? Thank you very much for the question. Yeah, um, artificial intelligence is, uh, as the name suggests, is uh, intelligence. Uh, arising from the use of machines, smart machines, uh, computers, to do what what human beings would otherwise be doing. Uh-huh. So it, it does it. Machines will do it in a very smart way, in a faster way. So uh, uh, the, 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 it, it, it borders on the, the, the uh, data science and all the uh, other associated uh, courses like uh, machine learning, uh, deep learning and all that. And when you say machine learning, it's an aspect of uh, artificial intelligence, which machines, smart machines will learn. Uh, they will take on materials that human beings would rather be doing and do the analysis. And uh, they are able to behave like human beings. You know, so the, the, the advantage is that you, you, you have faster way of doing things and more meticulous way of doing things. So you, you introduce efficiencies and effectiveness in terms of especially in decision making. So if your decision making is based on data, so we have to spend a lot of time uh, gathering data. Data maintenance is very important. Uh, so many organizations, both in the public sector and private sector, development partners and all, universities, we need to have data. We need to begin to know the importance of keeping data. And uh, uh, AI, and through data analytics and machine learning, we'll analyze this data and come up and aid decision-making process. So instead of using your human mind and uh, to, to do decision-making, which sometimes can be flawed, you know, you can have machines based on credible data to come up with uh, decisions that we can take and implement, which will help us to make progress in life. So uh, artificial intelligence is something that is in the developing state it's still evolving, it's an evolving science, but it's very interesting, it's, 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 it's deployment uh, and practical application is solving many problems for our world today. Yeah. So speaking of deployment, there are some concerns that artificial intelligence will be coming into taking people's jobs in the next few years to come. 
Um, are these concerns valid and, and, and what's your take on that? Yeah, I would say yes and no. Uh, yes, uh, yes, because uh, yes, people who have not uh, invested in training to migrate from the traditional way of doing things will lose their jobs. So that is why IDEC Digital has set up a center and other training centers. That's why we're having this tech job. There are training institutions here. So everybody who is using traditional methods to do business will have to enroll in some of these courses to do it, to upgrade your knowledge, your skills, so that you can keep your job. There will be that transformation. There's a need to do that transformation to keep your jobs. If you don't, you will certainly have to lose your job. Uh, but the number of jobs that we're going to lose because we are going to introduce uh, artificial intelligence ma machines and robots and automation is going to be less than the benefit. That is the number of jobs that are going to be created. A lot more jobs are going to be created for the teaming unemployed uh, graduates and youth. You know, people uh, can remotely work from your room, uh, on your laptop, on your phone, as a business and make money. You know, so uh, jobs will essentially be increased through uh, the introduction of these uh, scientific means of doing business. You know, so artificial intelligence is coming to provide more jobs. I bet people need to migrate from the old ways of doing things. Its application, uh, you see its application in the, in, the, in, the, in the banking sector, like fintechs. It helps them control the large number of clients they, they, they manage, the risk in terms of cyber security, in terms of uh, customer service, user experience. If you go into agriculture, its application for agriculture for small medium enterprises, uh, in terms of uh, you know farms, expanding your farm, uh, uh, predictions for uh, weather patterns as to when you can plant and, and, and plow your farm and sow, and then disease control in terms of surveillance. If they, there's going to be a uh, disease outbreak, these signals will, will pick it up. You know, improve uh, varieties. You know, of of, of seedlings and uh, the production process. Uh, will come up with improved yields, quality yields that can uh, be used for local consumption and also for export. You know that for the export market, if your products don't, in the agriculture side, if they don't meet certain standards, I mean, you cannot export. Yeah. So it's used in so many ways. In industry, uh, in mechanical engineering, uh, industry would like to use robots to do most of the very tedious jobs that human beings have been doing. So that uh, you can't do without human beings. Human beings will still be there. Because uh, artificial intelligence is artificial, but artificial intelligence doesn't provide uh, emotional intelligence. Uh, yeah, the human being has emotional intelligence, which uh, the machines cannot have. So uh, they need to work together. So artificial intelligence will increase the, the rapidity, the rate at which machines can help automate uh, industry and factory processes uh, so that you can produce more and uh, your profitability will increase, your sales and all that will increase. But it doesn't work alone. You still have human beings uh, who provide the other missing link. So artificial intelligence is not coming to replace uh, people and their jobs. Yeah. So finally, I want to come to STEM. I know Ghana's STEM development is picking up gradually, gradually. How can artificial intelligence be infused to ensure that we reach that point where our STEM levels are really great and can compete globally yeah in terms of science education uh, and, and training uh, stem uh, that is basically what we're talking about um, it, 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 it has to be uh, hinged on the uh, the learning of mathematics you know physics chemistry and all of those things that eventually you deploy through uh, soft skills uh, through computers to be able to uh, come up with products that are useful for and uh, make life easy for human beings. So uh, a lot of education is needed in the scientific uh, area. And I'm happy uh, many governments in Africa, including our own government in Ghana, is spending quite some time in STEM education, and especially for girls also. I mean, the, all of these sectors are dominated by uh, male dominated. So there's a conscious effort to encourage uh, ladies, girls to get involved, uh, girls in ICT and all of that. 
So when we have more scientists and we have more people in uh, 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 well educated and versed in these software applications, then uh, these are applicable to all all sectors of the economy, starting from uh, governmental agencies and department and agencies. So the, there will be more productivity. Uh, if you go to a private sector like uh, AGI, GNCCI and their members in industry, productivity will increase. Yeah. And uh, uh, if you go to academic institutions, they will be running programs and courses and training institutions like IDEC Digital and others will be running programs on all of these things. And the development partners are also very interested in this. So because this is going to uh, an emerging technology, uh, there's a, they need to also ha have a to sanitize the environment in which we operate as a business. You know, so uh, our regulators are very important. So uh, there has been a number of stakeholder engagements already happening where all the people who have a stake in these scientific developments and their uh, deployment and use are engaging in talks. How can we encourage innovation and creativity without stifling uh, the whole thing through uh, regulation? Yeah. So. Uh, regulators uh, like the NITA, they are coming to make a presentation here at this tech job fair. Cyber security authorities here, data protection commission is here. You come to appreciate that data is very sensitive and is, is a, a privacy of information. How do you protect people whose information is harvested? You know, there are certain standards that you must maintain. So all of these things are going to be done so that the dangers that uh, scientific uh, developments may uh, present are minimized and controlled. There are red lines you cannot cross. We're talking about ethics, standards, and principles. So the standards must be maintained, ethics, and then control and regulation. But not to uh, the extent that uh, regulation will stifle uh, innovation and creativity. So stakeholder engagement, therefore, becomes very important. Ambrose, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I've been speaking with Mr. Ambrose Yena, and he's from IDEC Digital. We've been talking about artificial intelligence and how to leverage on them. I'll move on to our next stand to find out what they have for us. Don't you go anywhere, we'll be right back. Tech. I have here with me Eugene Moyan and from the IoT Hub and he's going to tell us about 3D printing. Eugene, welcome to Bistec. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah. So what exactly am I looking at right now? I see some machine doing all kinds of things right here. So tell us what exactly this is. All right, sure. So this is a 3D printer. It's part of the emerging technology. So when I speak about emerging technologies, new technologies that are coming up or they're already existing and they are being updated. So what we have here is a 3D printer. Aside that we have robotics, AI, amongst other things that are emerging technologies. So with this, you're able to 3D print anything of your choice, from educational materials, let's say alphabets that kids use in learning in schools, to things that you can use in making your own projects. So most of the things we see in our environment, let's say um, our switches, our key holders, most of these basic things were 3D printed. So you put in something called a filament. filament where, okay. yes. So when this goes in there, it's being melted to form whatever shape you want. And um, this is the technology that's improving in the world. So during COVID, China was able to 3D print houses for quarantine. Houses? Yes. Like a whole house? A whole house, within wow. few days. So that's why I made mention of this is an emerging technology. It's still coming up. Still so very soon, we are not going to have masons and then the normal block laying and foundation. We're going to have 3D printed houses and then other things to live in. Yeah. So how, how, how did the development of this come about? Um, I know you have to do some coding and all of that, so just take us through that briefly. Sure. So with this, you need something like a software. Mm -hmm. The software that we use is called Blender. So we transfer, Blender. yes, we transfer the Blender from its language to the machine's language, so that it understands and it's able to print according to its calibrations and other things. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's basically the software side, and the hardware it handles by itself. So all you need is to input the information in here, and then it takes charge of whatever that it has to do. Yeah. yeah. So since it's an emerging technology, how effective can this be used and how can we leverage on this to, you know, keep a lot of solutions or find solutions to some of the things that our daily life we are not able to achieve? Okay. So with this, it's reliable according to the percentage. I'll be like 
90 or less 95 out of 100 percent because this same technology is being used to 3d print um human parts so let's say artificial hearts artificial kidneys so there's no need for transplanting again so the whites are using this to um, create artificial human parts that are supposed to save human beings and then keep them alive yeah. So do you have some examples of some of the things that the yeah. machine has been able to do? Yes. We can just show us briefly and what went into the process. Right. Just take us briefly. So Eugene is going to take us through um, one of the 3D printers, some of the things they've been able to use a 3D printer to develop. I see he's coming up. Is this some Lego or something? <laughs> yeah. So this is like a dinosaur. Dinosaur? Yeah. Wow, so the, the machine was able to develop this yes. right here? Yes, the flexibility, everything. Okay. The same as a fish over here. Wow. So this one can be used for, let's say, biology classes where they're able to study the parts of the fish and everything. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, how, many more of, how many more of such things can be done in a day? Um, it depends on the quality. Sometimes when you're printing, the quality also matters. It affects the time that it takes to print. So when you're printing something of high quality, and depending on the shape, it could take, let's say, an hour or maybe less. Some to it could take maybe seven, seven to let's say eight hours or nine hours. Yeah. Finally, um, you made mention of using the 3D printing to build houses. Should masons and uh, architects be worried? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think that's one issue that's rising up. Um, I know there's something training that robots or AIs are going to take over human works. And this is a typical example. But the thing is, as works are being lost, there are new jobs being created. So as you are moving from, let's say, the amazing stage, you can learn something new that has to do with AIs or let's say 3D printing. So you, whether you acquire new skills, so where the world is heading towards, you need to learn something new. You can't learn and then you just forget about it. So there are three things involved. You have to have the ability to learn, unlearn, and then relearn. Thank you so much, Eugene. You're yeah, I don't, I don't know if you're going to let me keep this, but uh, <laughs> it looks like I like it. It's a fish. Right, yeah. sure, so yeah. that's been Eugene Moyan, and he's with the IoT Hub, and he's been taking us through the 3D printer, and this is one of the things the 3D printer is able to do. Don't you go anywhere. This is still Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. We'll be right back. We are still here at the Tech Job Fair, and I have here with me Louisa Ayamga from the Academic City University College. And she's going to be telling us about uh, Tech Expo. Louisa, welcome to Bistec. How are you? I'm doing good. Hope you're fine too. I'm always, I always get excited to see women doing robotics and all of that. Um, what course are you studying in school and what is this whole uh, Academic City Robotics Club? So I'm studying Electrical and Electronics Engineering. I'm in my third year and I'm the president of the Robotics Club. So this year we are organizing the second edition of the ACT Tech Expo with the theme, the role of technology in sustainable agriculture. What this whole Tech Expo seeks to do is to motivate young people to become leaders in the field of STEM, robotics, technology, by leveraging um, the things they learn in class. So for this time around, we are organizing another one where we'll bring in high schoolers, other uh, students from the university as well. So when they come in, they work on projects that are geared towards sustainable agriculture. And it doesn't, it doesn't just end there. After this, we pick out the best projects and we try to incubate them for about a year. So during this period, they are trained on how to improve their projects better. And if possible, we'll be able to um, incorporate this into the marketplace and actually try to solve problems within Africa. And also, we are trying to link these students to corporate persons that can help them push their projects forward. So that's the two main aims of the ACT Tech Expo. Great. So you are into robotics, right? You love robotics. What, 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 is, what is the main goal for you? You want to be a robotics engineer or something? Um, I'm into robotics and technology and engineering as a whole. But then my main aim is to motivate people like me to also do what I'm doing. Of course, I want to build projects, I want to do big things, but then there are people that do not have that privilege. So I want to be that person that will also serve as a motivation to others to bring them to the spirit. Yeah. So, so back to it, I see some pictures here. What, what are some of the robots, robots that you guys are developing in development now? Okay, so for this, we have the holy box, holy, which is holy box. Holy box okay. Yeah, it's a fully 3D printed robot. Yeah, and this is used in one of the competitions. So based on the theme for a particular year, they're supposed to program your robot to do certain things. 
for example, this year it's um, sustainable agriculture. So you're supposed to program your robot to, let's say, plug a, a fruit, crack it open, pick out a seed from it. And all these three seeds, fruits are all 3D printed. So through this, we are trying to communicate that we can do a lot of stuff with 3D printing. Yeah. And also, yeah, that's it, yeah. So for last year, we had, it, last year's um, theme was industry automation. So you had to program your robot to pick cards from a certain place and drop them at a certain place, sometimes based on color. So this can be done manually or autonomously. And we were also privileged to have Professor Elsie Kalkman in our midst, and who should be joining us again. Yes, and she'll be joining us again this year because she was so in love with the projects that these young students were working on. So when we bring in these influential people, we try to motivate these students to do more. So what are your final words for anyone out there that wants to get into robotics? Don't think twice, just go for it. It's fun, it's interactive, you can do a lot of stuff with it. We can change the world with it. So don't think twice, just go for it. You don't need to have skills to start something. Thank you very much, Louisa. That was Louisa Ayamga from the Academic City University College. And we've been talking about their robotics program, which seeks to leverage on technology to solve solutions. I've also been speaking with a number of other tech focus or tech based persons here at the Tech Job Fair, and they've been sharing some of their developments and innovations with me right here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Mali Aholimega. Many thanks for watching. Welcome to Biz Headlines on Ghana Web TV. My name is Stella Jejum Sugli. To our first story, government settles 87 Ghana CD worth of bonds. Now, the government of Ghana has concluded the settlement of the Domestic Debt Exchange Program for GH denominated bonds and notes. This achievement is an important milestone for government in implementing the post-COVID-19 program for economic growth during the current economic crisis. Under the program, government managed to restructure bonds to the tune of $87.76 billion. According to the Ministry of Finance, the settlement was made in line with terms and conditions stipulated in the second amended and restated exchange memorandum dated 3rd February 2023. Russian oil to be starched in Ghana's pool of buyers shrink. A cargo of Russian oil is heading for storage tanks in Ghana, a nation that exports crude itself and is on the doorstep of two regional supply powerhouses. The development suggests that traders could be scouring the market for new buyers of Russian barrels after the European Union stopped almost all seaborne imports from the country in December. The bloc's measures made Moscow hugely reliant on Chinese and Indian purchases. In a related development, however, President Akufuado is optimistic that Ghana will be able to clinch the IMF deal by the close of March. President Anado Danko Akufuado says the government is systematically fulfilling the terms of the staff level agreement reached with the IMF and is also confident that it will secure a deal by the close of March. With the successful process of the domestic debt exchange program and the support received from other creditors, he was upbeat that Ghana would clinch the three billion bailout from the IMF to improve the country's current economic situation. Quote, I am confident with the cooperation we are receiving from members of the Paris Club and the People's Republic of China, which has sent a delegation from China's Exim Bank to Accra over the weekend to meet with officials of the Ministry of Finance we shall be able to go to the board of the fund to conclude finally the agreement by the end of March. End quote. Governments have secured a facility to ensure that impounded Ghana cards stuck in bonded warehouses are released to the National Identification Authority. 
The Minister of Finance, Ken Furiata, disclosed this to Parliament on Tuesday, February 28, 2023, when he appeared before the House. He was in Parliament with the NIA Boards and the Electoral Commission Chairperson to respond to issues around the EC's constitutional instrument, which is linked with the issuance of Ghana cards. As the NIA um, Professor Atifwa said, we had come into an agreement with Cal Merchant Bank to ensure that the 3.5 million cars will be released at the appropriate time for the work to be done. We agreed on a 100 million CD transfer, and as he rightly said, 80 million um, has been put into the accounts of Cal, and 20 million, as he also mentioned, uh, will be done by close of business um, today. Um, so we are very comfortable uh, about the situation to ensure that the needed cards will be given to the NIA to do its work. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, the government has been um, extremely um, good about funding elections. Uh, and once um, NIA's um, job is linked to the elections, Mr. Speaker, we can assure the House that we would ensure that the resources needed would always be provided. Mr. Speaker, for example, in 2020, the approved budget for um, the Electoral Commission was 1.063 uh, billion um, Ghana cities. Uh, at the end of the day, um, the government released 1.367 billion to ensure that the elections went on well. It's the same um, fervor, interest, and commitment um, that now that the NIA is linked um, to the success of the elections, uh, we'll do our part to ensure that the appropriate resources are made available um, to NIA. Ghana's zero bonds extend declines as debt restructuring hits snag. Ghana's zero bonds extended declines on Wednesday after the country missed a self-imposed deadline to restructure its bilateral debt and S&P Global Rating warned bondholders face larger losses than anticipated. The nation's 2032 dollar securities dropped 0.5% to 36.8 cents in the dollar by 8.18 a.m. in London, bringing their decline this week to 1.7%. Finance Minister Ken Ofoyata wanted to reach a restructuring agreement with bilateral creditors by the end of February to help qualify for a $3 billion international monetary fund program. So far, Ghana has only partially completed the domestic debt part of the exchange program. A cargo containing 600,000 barrels of Russian crude oil to Ghana is reported to have been loaded at a port located in Kazakhstan. According to the Joy News report, documents in its possession show the exact port where the crude oil cargo was loaded is situated in Atau, Kazakhstan, where it set sail on January 25, 2023, before making its way to Ghana. The portal said that the certificate of quantity cited showed the shipper of the crude oil is the Hong Kong-based Bellatrix Energy Limited, which is said to have carried exactly 79,804.455 metric tons of crude oil. A total of four new large-scale mining companies are expected to start operations in the country within the next 24 months. According to the Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Mr. Samuel Abujinapo, the new mines will comprise three gold mining firms and one lithium mining company and will boost the country's mining receipts as well as create new employment opportunities for the youth. The four, Ahafo North, Azuma Resources, Ewoya and Cardinal Resources will be located in the Ahafo Upper East and West and Central Regions. <music> And that'll be all for Biz Headlines this week. For more of our news stories, log on to www.ghanaweb.com. Also follow us on all our social media platforms at The Ghana Web. Also on YouTube, Ghana Web TV. My name is Stella J. Jomsugli. Do have a lovely weekend. <laughs>
forum. I remember the blood member document stated that there's so many years, mm -hmm. and then after we can't just watch it and say that we were in front of the law, so we are not yeah. going to pay. So we have to go and look for money to pay everybody. We, we, we paid everyone. So we finished, we were only like um, about 40,000. And then the letter that we had at the gate also, we had to use that one to pay sound and other things as well. So we were left with like 200 or 150, I remember very well. And that was the money that we had to share between us. It was a tragedy because mm -hmm. you see, you are the producer mm -hmm. and you also play the lead. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's, it's the two of us, we are, we are playing the lead. So before even the play starts, you know, you are just fine to see whether you can open the auditorium. Mm -hmm. so just imagine you have invested so much money, you are playing the lead, and you just move into the auditorium and there are like 50 or so. Right, but I, just, I just peeped the year of the show. I, I think it was, it was one of the biggest mistakes in my life. I shouldn't have looked inside yeah. the auditorium to see everything before. So I looked and then I went off my. I forgot. You I forgot the lines. <laughs> E Forum S this and every Friday on Ghana Web TV. Now oh back can cray. Susu sang quite be a one to Nambia a man in quite be brave. Mommy, you fish you can see my cut so people send you missing cut from Lemon and Finance while Brian did a shake and let me do house. Lemon and Finance. She said you're sending money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I have something like an instant charge spin. I think which in so you and you own. We should be promo code Dr. Like it. Nigga, ten pound, ten dollars, and a ten Canadian dollars for the first transaction. We just send this guy a coffee. Download the Lemonade Finance. This week on E Forum. I remember the blood member document stated that there's so many years, mm -hmm. and then after we can't just watch it and say that we were in front of the law, so we are not going to pay. So we have to go and look for money to pay everybody. We, we, we paid everyone. So we finished, we were only like um, about 40,000. And then the letter that we had at the gate also, we had to use that one to pay sound and other things as well. So we were left with like 200 or 150, I remember very well. And that was the money that we had to share between us. It was a tragedy because mm -hmm. you see, you are the producer mm -hmm. and you also play the lead. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's, it's the two of us, we are, we are playing the lead. So before even the play starts, you know, you are just fine to see whether you can open the auditorium. Mm -hmm. so just imagine you have invested so much money, you are playing the lead and you just move into the auditorium and there are like 50 or so. Right, but I just, I just peeped. <laughs> the year of the show, I, I think it was, it was one of the biggest mistakes in my life. I shouldn't have looked inside the yeah. auditorium to see everything before. So I looked and then I went off my. I forgot. You I forgot, forgot your lines. And I told you, I was like, hey, minute, I go cow. <laughs> e Forum S, this and every Friday on Ghana Web TV. Now, oh, me. Oh, back, can cray. <laughs> Susu sang kwai bi a wan to Nambia e man in kwai be brave. Mommy, you fish you can see my cut so. People go send you missing cut from Lemon and Finance. Wa Brian did a shake and let me do pounds. Lemon and Finance. She said you send him money back home from UK, Canada. And now US, I have something like an instant charge spin. I think which in so yeah. And you unbeatable. We should be promo code Dr. Like it. Nigga, ten pound, ten dollars, and a ten Canadian dollars for the first transaction. Would you send this guy a coffee? Download to Lemonade Finance. As you may be well aware, yesterday you had an occasion to raise some concerns about our approach in terms of language use. I must say that when sitting came to a close, uh, my respected colleague Emmanuel Amakofibua and I met. We had a fruitful discussion regarding the matters in issue. And I think. Uh, we resolved that things would get far, far better and better and better uh, henceforth. And I believe that the mutual respect that exists between the two of us, proud to he uh, getting his elevation, will remain. Of course, we also 
realized that both of us were misconstruing uh, certain matters because of some other external uh, matters out there unbeknown to us. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to assure you and assure the House that as far as uh, I am concerned, any time I get on my feet, it is for the good of the politics of this House. However, I've taken his concerns on board and that will guide the approach. So, Mr. Speaker, these are the words I have for you. Uh, for anything that he might have said, uh, touching on my ego character or whatever it is, I have forgiven him and I have let go. We've discussed that and uh, we've taken water of it, over it. We didn't take beer or wine. I'm sure after, after the Lent, uh, we would uh, have a go at uh, a bottle of uh, Coke. Just because the truth is that I have allergies, so Coke is something that I can entertain, not uh, beer. My majority leader is looking at my face. Just because, because he knows we are partners. Don't in. bring in majority leader. Just because he, just because he wants to talk about you and uh, <laughs> just because, so just because that was on a lighter note. Yes. So, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yes. May we hear from the for the wise council yesterday. Indeed, I met the uh, respected honorable Fenyo Maki yesterday. We agreed that we are in uh, here because of the people's business. We can only work together to make sure that we achieve this very important work that has been given to us. And what is required is trust and professionalism. And um, I assured him, as our leader did from the first day, our intention here is to make sure we work, not to obstruct government business, but to make sure we can work together uh, for the people of Ghana. And it is in that spirit that we are going to work. I also uh, told him that, you know, we are in the length period, and uh, if there are things that I said that were offensive, I have... Uh, Things he said that are offensive, I'm forgiving. <laughs> In fact, and I have, and we move forward together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, <laughs> since 2016. Every second, every hour, every 30 minutes. Since 2016, every minute, I can pay for your mama. I've, I've, I'm yet to talk to both of them. I'm yet to talk to both of them. Should there be any endorsement? Which one will you endorse or you go back? They are all my guys. Fred, I've been with Fred Nyama. Fred Nyama has been my friend since 2012. And Dumelo has been my friend since we became stars. So they are all my guys. So whoever merges as a I mean, candidate for that constituency, as I did for Dumelo last uh, 2020, I'll go there and do this. John, John, Dumelo, John Dumelo won. 2020, John Dumelo won. But no details. No, do they even have MP at all? They do. Since they are Okay, me, I've never heard that there's MP at that constituency. <laughs> about current government but we have government at all do we me i don't me i see like we've just packed some people to just i mean be in a convoy move up and now for us to see that we have government but there's no government free says i pay even just last i mean uh, monday three days ago eh? do you know the kind of provisions and the things that i sent to my daughter in cape coast Every month, I have to buy provision of 1500 and send it to my daughter. 
every month I have to buy a provision and stuff thousand five and send it to my daughter at Cape Coast. There's nothing to to, to speak about. Because I don't I don't think we have a government. The only thing that the Ghanaians are disciplined. Okay? So they are managing their life according to their discipline mentality. Apart from that, forget we don't have government. I can't read them because they, they have they, they don't they don't qualify to be rated. Money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I am something like an instant charge. I still waiting in Sunday. And you're unbeatable. We should be promo code Dr. Like it. Nigga, 10 pounds, 10 dollars, and not 10 Canadian dollars. The first transaction would be send this guy a coffee. Download to Lemonade Finance. to see everything before so i looked and then i went off my i forgot you i forgot, forgot your eyes <laughs> because you know like you and i told you i was like hey minute, i walk out <laughs> Thanks for joining us on so this episode of eForum on Ghana Web TV. My name is Abranti Pass. As usual, today we are seated for a conversation on theater production in Ghana. What has been the progress? Where are we headed? And how are those in the field actually faring in terms of, you know, no coffee? This and many other issues we are seated for a conversation on it. I have in the studio General Intetia. General Intetia is a, is a, is a, is a, is a stage. Uh, actor and then stage stand up comedian, stand -up comedian and, then, and then and then comic actor you know, okay <laughs> what else um you can give me art painting <laughs> oh you paint too? yeah i, paint I never knew i'll paint by the way i'll paint you you know be i don't know <laughs> that one <laughs> dr so is also yeah. a stage actor and unfortunately that's all i know about uh, stage actor stage uh, acting and then concept uh, developer okay. also run workshops and you know, what does it mean to be a concept developer you know, uh, sometimes if you sit down and um, you realize that, okay, um, we can make and put two and two together mm -hmm. to actually uh, build up a brand for somebody or to, to create content for, uh, uh, for somebody or if somebody wants to sell something and you say, okay, I, I think that when we use a concept like this or a concept like that, mm -hmm. you can actually sell. Yeah, so, I see. How has that aided you in your journey in the theater <coughs> um, field? Oh yeah, um, um, it has in fact helped us because uh, one of the concepts that uh, myself and Jim are together with the National Theatre Development is a Wednesday Night Theatre, mm -hmm. which realized that uh, after graduation, a lot of um, students from the performing arts do not get into the craft. Why? Because you don't have a lot of production houses. So we decided in partnership with the National Theatre to come up with a Wednesday Theatre, mm -hmm. whereby we encourage young, 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 young artists to form groups, theatre groups, so um, so that. They can know how the business is like. So Wednesday Night Theatre is a platform whereby they experiment, whereby they they know how the theatre business is. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping in the next five years or so we'll have a lot of these young arts and we'll find ways and means to promote them onto the mainstream stage. Okay. I think I think for now if I'm not exactly we have like fifteen production houses mm -hmm. we're doing every last Wednesday in a month when you go to the National Theatre you get a play to watch. You know, you travel outside and every day you walk to a theatre and there's something going on. Unfortunately when you come to Ghana 
you only have it like let's say in three four months time then somebody puts up a play before you get to see something but now every last wednesday in the month you go to the national theater you get a play just get to see national theater of ghana and the two videos productions the, the main idea is that get yourself together somebody should be a good script writer somebody should be a good actor director and then somebody should design the costume all you need is your costume your play your hair's house the national theater is going to give you the tourism it's going to give you light sound everything and then the two idiots will also support with uh, you know uh, coming around to see your rehearsals mm -hmm. and everything directing it and making sure it's good and then you are good to go does that not put pressure on national theater not at all i think it's, it's rather it's rather helping them as well so that at least you know if they have more production houses mm -hmm. in Ghana, it now becomes a good business for them because now people will be wanting to put up place and then they will come, come book the national theater and business will become good over the years <coughs> Concerns have been that uh, the National Theatre should be closed down for renovation and, you know, some people have actually voiced out one or two things. Do you, do you share that view? I, I share that view, but, but it comes back to the, to the fact that if you close National Theatre down, what do we have? That's mm -hmm. all that we have. Unfortunately, uh, the current government promised that they would build theatres across the country, which I even encourage me to support them in the, in the elections, but unfortunately we've not seen what they said. We are hoping that you know it becomes something that is important for them. Agenda, you know, government after government, I see that they don't really value the arts. You know, when it comes to Ghana, they don't really value it. because if you really value the arts and you promise that you build theaters, but this time we should at least see two or three across you know some of the regions and all that. So we see that the Charlie, you are trying. If you if you can't do across that you said, do like two or three, or the one that we have renovate it. If we say we we'll close the national theater down right now, where do we go? Yeah, we just have a few, and that, that cannot even match the standards of the National Theatre. It's unfortunate that the air conditions at the National Theatre is not working now. They have to get a rented air conditions mm -hmm. where you know, a private person also has to come and charge additional money after you are done paying the, uh, you know, the fee at the National Theatre. It's very sad, but unfortunately, that's the only thing that we have. What do we do? I think it's about time that we come together because we've cried year in and year out. Not this government alone. I think it's a very long time ago. I think the things started even going down. From Kufo's era, mm -hmm. you know, and then we cried. Uh, at Amlo's came, we cried. Mama came, we cried. Akufado is in, we are crying, and we are not seeing anything. So I think we have to start advising ourselves as practitioners, and then probably see other means that we can use to support the theater to, you know, get on its feet. Because I, I can personally say that the director of the National Theatre in Film is really trying her best, but actually, she's not getting what she needs. And, and what would these other means be? Uh, other means be maybe we writing proposals to private entities mm -hmm. to see if they can consider and support. For instance, we have you know, uh, huge electronic, electronics companies, maybe they can consider and go do some partnership with the National Theatre by providing them with huge air conditioners, you know, and all that. I even learned the plant the, the, the plant that they have right now is being managed by a private person right now. So if you are doing a play and, 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 and light goes off, they have to call the person. Recently it happened to one of our brothers, um, um, the name has escaped. Cognance. Very, very sad. You know, now the, everyone were on phone calling the guy who has it, and, they, and then the battery that they use to spark the thing is with the guy. So they were calling him and then putting pressure. And they had to explain to them that it's my private thing, right? I'm managing it, so I have to bring the battery some, from somewhere to come and power the place. And patrons were inside the National Theatre, and the place was off. So, uh, to add to what uh, Jema uh, just said, mm -hmm. I think that it's also the responsibility of government to, to provide funding for the National Theatre. You know, when you travel to Europe and other developed countries, you have funding, okay, whereby there's like maybe five million Ghana CD or three million Ghana CD for the year, whereby young uh, artists and young production houses can just apply for these funds. That that will at least serve as a cushion to uh, to help them and to inspire them to to create and to produce more because. See, theater is very expensive. Theater is very expensive. Our current play that we are putting up right now, if you do the total budget for the entire production, you'll be shocked. You'll be so much surprised. Theater is very, 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 very expensive. So I think that if government also invest, provide some form of funding, okay, for the national theater, and young artists can at least um, and, uh, and write for funding, and you get a little bit of you know money to push you to start. I think that's going to be a lot Beyond the venue and what you have mentioned, how would you rate the progress of theatre in Ghana? Oh, uh, we can say that um, 
theater is right now we're progressing because from way back uh, I, I I think that in, in our years in the university, university yeah there was only uh, Nikome, Latif, and Uncle Abu that yeah. were actually doing our production at the National Theatre. But I mean, ten years down the line, you can, there, 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 there are a lot of young folks right now, a lot of uh, production houses and young folks who are actually trying their best to to to, uh, to actually get into the business. And patronage has also been good. If you like, if you take it way back some time. And now you, you can realize that now lots lots of people are patronizing the theater. What do you think you did to ensure that the patronage increases? I, I think it's consistency. Mm -hmm. Like we've been very consistent. Like I said, different production houses. It's like those days that we have we had only like three four production houses where they put up a play and then they go to sleep uh, like six months time before somebody. But now we have a lot of production houses now. So at least if you watch, if you, if I will, I will rate everything like let's say within. Um, two to three months, there's a play at the National Theatre. Mm -hmm. So now people are consistently reminded that, oh, okay, theatre is going on. People now come to see the National Theatre. I remember I've gotten uh, uh, five people who were like, oh, I don't want to see play at the National I want to see movie and all that. I said, oh, you come and see how to take play is like. And then they, they get to the tour and they see the sets and everything, they are wild. They're like, oh, tired. now they become like constant people who always want to come and see plays at the National Theatre. So I, I think it's been consistent, like we've been consistent, different productions. I've got talk of the Riverman Productions, Blue Productions, Asapa Productions, um, um, uh, PB Entertainment, Super Farm, you know, Cartel uh, um, um, Multimedia. Now people are now putting up plays, you know, and, and I think that it's, that's the main reason why people are now loving theatre. If if people are patronizing it, how come we? How come you are not making the money that you anticipate, or, or are you making money? Uh, <laughs> um, no, 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 no. It's a it's a fifty fifty. Yeah. Um, because um, okay, number one is is either you go to a partnership with national theatre. That means uh, like your venue is sorted out. Okay. And with that, you have to have a good proposal, you have to have a good marketing and strategy for the other to see that, okay, you know what you're about. Mm -hmm. So let's say that the young up and coming productions who are coming, they don't have the, you know, to. So, and if you want to pay for the National Theatre thing, you have paid for it. Mm -hmm. okay, then you have to go for, for, uh, for uh, advertisement on TV. That's also a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then you need a few, you know, known faces who are in the business or the industry. Mm -hmm. like. Uh, talking about stage, you know that there's a difference between stage and the movies. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so there are people who are like gods of the stage. You have to get a few known faces who are probably expensive. And so sometimes you're to read like read from uh, 50,000 to 60,000 to 70,000 to 80,000 just to produce this, uh, these uh, kind of shows. But, 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 but on, a, on, a, on a good day, you are able to get at least your money that you put in. Yeah. Like if, if, if things go well. Sometimes, so I can, I can say a play like. Um, Money heist. Money heist yeah. We didn't run up lost. It, it was it was it was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was okay. We didn't get what we were looking for. But at least we were able to pay people. We were able to get the money that we invested in. And I would say that it's a progress. Mm -hmm. So it's not like bad like before that you stage a play and then you get like five ten people at the auditorium and then you, you finish and you sit down in front of the national theater. <laughs> I remember our first production. Um, we love mm -hmm. We finished paying the people. We realized that we were left with like two hundred cities. And then we were staying at Amasana, we had to go back home. And then oh. our, yes, and we didn't run as a loss. We were only people we had to yeah. go and pay this time. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah finish. I, yeah. I, have, I have a question yeah, yeah, yeah. here, but it was a tragedy because mm -hmm. you see, you are the producer mm -hmm. and you also play the lead. You yeah. know, like, it's, it's, it's the two of us, <laughs> we, are, we are playing the lead. So, before even the play starts, you know, you are just fine to see whether you can open the auditorium. Mm -hmm. So, just imagine you have invested so much money, you are playing the lead, and you just look into the auditorium, and there are like 50 or right, but I just, I just peeped. <laughs> the end of the show, I, I think it was one of the biggest mistakes in my life. I shouldn't have looked into the yeah. auditorium to see everything before. So I looked and then I went off my. I forgot. You I forgot your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, like. You and I told you, I said, hey, Minnie, I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you have to come on stage and. Let's see how some best And they give you 100%. Yeah. And that is it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that uh, that is also what uh, differentiates, you know, like your. your uh, the level of your. Performance skills. Mm -hmm. that but we nearly, we nearly stopped after that show. So that day, what did you do? We played. We played. No, show. Um, after the show. After the show. Yes. We, we, and you were left with. We were left. So we yeah. had to go and borrow money to pay people. Mm -hmm. I remember we brought Mamedo on stage after so many years. Mm -hmm. And then after, we can't just watch it and say that we've run at the loss. So we had to go and look for money to 
pay everybody. We, we, we paid everyone. So we finished, we were only like um, about 40,000. And then the later that we had at the gate also, we had to use that one to pay sound and other things as well. So we were left with like 200 or 150, I remember very well. And that was the money that we had to share between us. Did you? And I told him that, yeah, we are done. You <laughs> told <laughs> we are done. We said, hey, we'll go and that, was, that was my next question. Like, <laughs> did you at a point feel, this thing is not worth it, even though we had a passion, even though we wanted to do it. Like, did you feel Oh, no, like no, after, after, after that play. After that, we said, Charlie, you know, that, that's it. We're done. No, we'll do this again. We can't do this okay. one and, and kill ourselves before our time. So, 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 <laughs> so you know, like, months later, uh, months later, we were there, we were there, we were there, we were there, we're there, and then we had this beautiful story. Mm -hmm. Money in the dark. We said, man, Charlie, this story is so tight. Mm -hmm. That is what we want to fix last year. You have to do this yes, yes. again. So, when the previous year, we were so <laughs> made a loss. Massive. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We went to do two, no. We went to do two. We went on a weekday. You know, now in Ghana, it's okay. very difficult to yeah. sell during weekday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think now the court so has come back. People are now. <laughs> but but day, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that was one of the uh, concepts that we also developed. That, okay, we, re we realized that every bar's day, they are just concerts and movies, but there's yeah. nothing like a theater like a production. True. So we said, that, okay, let's just want to do a test that yes, yes, on a know. Wednesday. So, like, the first bar's day was on a Wednesday. And that Wednesday too was Champions League. Real Madrid and PSG. Okay. <laughs> so boys say, Charlie, boy, boy, this one. I go this, pick this, this one. one. This one. <laughs> I know. I know, I know how it will end. You know. Because once yeah. there is soccer. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So you know. So even if we want to go on a weekday, uh, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday is Champions League. Mm -hmm. Thursday is Europa League. You know, and sometimes we have some shows on Friday night and on. And like we have some games on Friday night. And, yeah. Yeah. So so the Saturday is 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 is. is it's like the best. Um, but, uh, after after the Wednesday, I told him, like, bro, let's go back to Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Because Saturday is the show. But then I think we went for the Saturday, yeah. and that was our first, our first, first massive sellout show. So, yeah, so what, what do you consider before scheduling a date for your productions? Apart from the Champions League, because I know now mm -hmm. when there is a Champions League game, you go yeah. So, apart from that one, is there any particular thing that you consider before scheduling? <coughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah, you look at the number of shows around, just scout, you know, just look, do an overview mm -hmm. and see, okay, they are going in the month of, let's say, March. Mm -hmm. Now, within March, we have like six shows. Mm -hmm. Okay, the shows, some are movies, some are musical shows and all that. Okay, they don't, we are not really looking at any theatrical show within March, so let me go within this month. So we look at the shows and the weight of the show, mm -hmm. because when, you know, some weight, some shows carry, carry yeah, very, yeah. very, you know, yeah. high, high, high. Into it, so you don't go around that time, you flop. So you just have to look at consider all those things as well, and then look at a time that people will be receiving their salaries, mm -hmm. you know, getting to the end yeah, of yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, all those things are tricks that mm -hmm. you have to really, really look at, and then also really push for sponsorship. It's difficult to get sponsors, sponsorship in Ghana now, but then play your cards very well and make sure that at least. Yeah, if you can't go in it at all, play one or two TV stations and then maybe a radio station and then you can go. But if you say you want to do social media alone, it's very, very difficult. You can't do Facebook and Instagram alone to sell <clears throat> Let's take a quick break. When we return, I, I would want to find out why it is a bit difficult for you to get sponsorship because it's 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 actually a worry. If you look at the amount that goes into production mm -hmm. and you don't get sponsors and even when you get, I'm sure it's sponsorship I don't know how that actually um, take any burden off you as a producer. But um, let's have that conversation after this break. Watching e forum on Ghana Web TV. The name is Abranti. I'm doing this with General Tetia and Dr. So. They are both stage actors. We're having a conversation about theater production in Ghana, how far we have come. And later on, we'll talk about what they have up in their sleeves. But before we went on a break, I was, you know, initiating a conversation on the sponsorship. How difficult is it for you to get sponsors? And what do you get from these sponsors? How does that take any burden off you as producers? Yeah, um, when we started, I mean, in fact, when we started, it was very, very, very difficult because uh, if you go to any sponsor, it's a question of okay, what have you done before, mm -hmm. and what are you bringing on board, uh, what can you help us with? Um, 
are we really sure that you know lots of people are coming to watch your show? Are you going to have a packed show? So they look at all of this and look at the strength of what you can bring on board, and that will influence um, whether they can come on board as a sponsor or not. And even those days, as you um, as uh, we said during the break. I mean, you just get it, uh, they just give you product and not cash. Some will give you, you know, uh, rings, uh, souvenirs and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes those help, you know, uh, you can distribute it to your cast and crew. I mean, if you have drinks and water, they actually uh, sort that part of your bedding or that part of your cost. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, in recent years, uh, I mean, the brand has, has, has grown also become very mature in the business we have understood the business so if we write these uh, proposals and we go to these proposal meetings and stuff like that and uh, we know what to say we know what we can offer and we know what those brands expect and we know what we can give to them in return so i would say that uh, in these recent years like it has really been a little bit good we've had some 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 guys who have come on board and who have actually really really supported the business but i think it's really going to be difficult for up and coming Maybe I should take you back. Um, you walk home <coughs> when the <laughs> when, when when you run at a loss. Yeah. How was the mood when you 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 had a show and you noticed that at the end of the day you did not only break even but you had profit. In fact, it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, I think th that was the first time that. I, I went on stage mm -hmm. and I was very excited, excited and fulfilled. I was like, wow, the work has paid, paid off. Like, you know, after pushing so many years, you know, running at a loss and everything, and now you, you, you get on stage, you see that the whole of the National Theatre is filled up to the brim, you have the glass floor, and everybody's excited, and the storyline is beautiful, and all that. That was, I think that was, it was a play that we finished and we got the standing ovation, mm -hmm. you know, the storyline and everything. If you're not following the story, you're not, you're not following the story, you're enjoying the comedy, if you're not enjoying the comedy, you are, there's something that you have to pick in the lessons and everything. So, in fact, we're very, very excited. And that's what we told ourselves that, Charlie, we, we, don't, we don't give up, we, we, have going we, will, we will continue to do it. Yeah. And, 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 and that was in February uh, 2020, mm -hmm. and then after that, COVID came. So, yeah. so we closed down uh, theaters and stuff like that. So, Two years we were not on stage, like we were not doing uh, productions and stuff like that. But that was also a very, very good time for us to have kept on going. But COVID also closed down um, everything. But it's also helping in a certain way because a lot of artists, you know, uh, that was when social media also became the new avenue for lots of guys, you yeah. know, to come on yeah. and do stuff and get their audiences and stuff like that. So even though COVID came, it was a good negative and positive. Uh, what happened to two idiots? Like the you had a skit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Tales of the two idiots. Yeah. Um, what happened is that um, I when you mentioned the COVID and social media yeah. thing, that was why it yeah. got me there. Yeah, yeah. So after the twenty twenty, uh, after our last uh, production, mm -hmm. I relocated to Germany uh, because I got married. Mm -hmm. So like I relocated to Germany to join my wife there. Okay. So uh, at that particular point in time, we sat down and we said that you know what? Okay, I will go to Germany. I will try to see. You. And work on some international deals, international collaborations, so that you also stay here yeah. and you also try to work on um, um, collaboration. So even though uh, the two years have not been uh, like performing together, we have a company that we are running that we are always putting ideas together because mm -hmm. everything is a picture of how we can also take uh, you know Ghana into the world. So by kind of courtesy of our hard work, we have an uh, international collaboration in May. Mm -hmm whereby we are collaborating with um, a German organization, uh, Bridgeworks. We having some international collaboration with some artists here and we go to Germany we'll come here too. So it's, 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 that's what happened today. I see. So before, before, between now and May, what would you guys be doing? So we have like, we have this coming, a play, a play coming out on the 11th of okay. March. And then also after we are trying to recruit people, get more people into the arts, you know, when it comes to theater, because I believe that a time is coming that I cannot do it all alone. Mm. I believe that there are thousands and one talents out there who are better than even what I do now. Mm. So why don't we create, you know, an avenue for them, get them more opportunities? We are also looking at, you know, producing movies as well, where we have a very beautiful movie storyline, where we're looking at, you know, a shooting between Ghana and Germany. Mm. 
very beautiful storyline. And when they're able to do it, it's going to sell. You are looking at Netflix and all that. And by the way, you get to a, a time that you have to grow. You don't always have to stay, stay like the same thing yeah, as you started from. You have to push high, high, harder and then get to a different level. And that's what we are, we are looking. <coughs> we believe that you know, in the next two, three, five years to come, the two videos shouldn't be the same two videos that started back at the University of Ghana, you know, two young guys doing their own thing. We have to push and get to somewhere. So movies, recruiting people, you know, and then also trying to set up our own uh, production house, you know, get an office, employ people, give hope to people. Mm -hmm. That's that's the main thing, you know. You, you said you had a you have a play on March eleventh. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's talk about that play. What's what's the play about? Okay, so um, let me take it to you. Uh, <laughs> poet, then it's about. Um, oh, Hokohoko, then. Uh, Why did you go there to go and do it? You know, it's, it's, it's actually about a successful bank manager mm -hmm. who had an affair with the National Service personnel. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. You are the first like, to stay this way. No, it might seem like it's, it's, it's a story. I'm that saying you, know. you are the first to stay this. No, no it, it might seem like it's a story that you've heard no. about that you know, but um, you are the first to stay this. Yeah, so, 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 I had an affair with the national service uh, personnel. Uh, mm. They ended it. Um, the girl was not happy. The girl was not happy. But mm. you see, the beautiful thing about the relationship is that um, the two involved in the relationship only allow social media to see what we wanted to see. Mm. And at the end of the day, when something goes wrong, we don't really get to know the real story because it's one side, the girl will tell her side, the man will tell her side, like mm -hmm. side of the story. So we don't really get to know what actually really happened. Okay. But this time, the girl has accused the man of rape, mm -hmm. who is a very serious child. And the girl says she has evidence to prove that this man raped her. So she will go to court? Yes. And the man says he did not rape her. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the legal system, and as we say in the court, evidence is the name of the game. <laughs> so, can the girl prove beyond reasonable doubt that she was raped? And can a man also prove his innocence? We say, when recollections differ, mm. the truth always becomes diluted. Mm. Okay, so it's, 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 it's a very interesting play. It's, it's comedy. We have the whole Kiliti at the Smakola in the court. Mm. So that <coughs> Judge Louis Lamy's court is where we are taking this mm. case to. And it's a very, very interesting piece. As we say, when you're not laughing, you're following the story and you're enjoying the story. You can actually do both at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was this play that I watched. Um, I forgot it. I don't know whether it's are we safe or the, it had police. The set was police station. Are we, are we safe? Uh, are we safe? Are we safe? Are we safe? Yeah, yeah. Lots of lessons, yeah. and you actually enjoy the comic side of yes. the whole thing. So uh, on March. Uh, March 11 is Saturday. Yes, yes, uh, yes. After, learning, Saturday. after learning your lessons. Yes. So, <laughs> Saturday. Yeah. So, um, what time? So, the first show is 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. and the second show is 8 p.m. Okay. And the second show is 8 p.m. And the race is a cool one. Oh, 100 is everybody can afford 100 is at 4 p.m. They say 100 Ghana and we see see ourselves will be there. We will be there. So, we are there. Yes, yes. Yes. And if you want to buy your tickets online, you can sit in the comfort of your home. Just pick your phone and then you dial star 447 star 1096 hash. Star four four seven star one zero nine six hash. Some 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 people want to buy tickets at the gate. Yeah. Do we still have that yeah, option? We have we have tickets okay. at the gate as well. Okay. But you know the ticket is fast selling, <coughs> mm -hmm. so sometimes you get scared that you try and buy online, so you save yourself from that stress and all that. Yeah. But if you come to the gate, you might get tickets to buy at that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I'm seeing Doctor So on stage. Yes. I'm seeing you. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. seeing the. Um, this one's a joke, it's also on stage. This one is coming back on stage. Coming back on stage. Okay. 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 Defending, defending someone, but don't, 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 uh, yeah. skates, yeah. It's also going to be on stage. On that's also an interesting yes. skate. I mean, you guys have been doing well. Um, if, for, you see, if for nothing at all, Mama Esri, you're real fit class or mining Koye. Yes, three years, ah, you're a big guy. Hey, yeah, bro. <laughs> all right, thank you for coming. Um, it's been an interesting conversation. But before we go, maybe you have um, something to tell your fans out there. Um, so that's your camera. That's oh, with my a, camera. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, what we have to say is that we just really want to thank you, you know, for 
for supporting uh, Ghanaian comedy, Ghanaian content, and Ghanaian theatre all these years. We really want to uh, thank you. We appreciate you so, 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 so much. This is how we help ourselves to grow. You know, you support us. We also feed you with a lot of good content. And that is the only way to grow the industry. We believe that we are here for just two reasons, to love one another and to help one another. So let's just keep that vibe. Yes, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure. You see, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to come out in your numbers to support us. Come and see Clemento Shires, Lawyer and TJ Lantas. Yeah, Foster Romanus on stage as a pastor. You know, you will love his play. Louis Lantas. Foster, Foster. 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 Foster, we partnered with you guys, and it was fantastic. You are still with us, and we appreciate you. This is your home. Anytime um, you need us, just um, call on us. Uh, for every event organizer out there, anyone in the creative space, if you need our assistance, let's do this together. It's an ecosystem, of course. We are there for you, you are there for us. That's how we grow this industry. And that's how we end this episode of eForum on Ghana Web TV. For more news, visit our website, www.ghanaweb.com. And for more of our videos, visit, um, go to our YouTube channel, Ghana Web TV. Um, you can also go on the website, there is the Ghana Web TV um, section there, and then you get a chance to watch other videos and uh, programs that are produced by Ghana Web and uh, other external <coughs> sources. Thank you for watching. My name is Benefo Wabin. You can call me Abratifa. Have a nice and hope to meet you at the National Theatre. Media production needs any more we see here in Bishia or in Musa. Upon. to talk about current government but we have government at all do we we I mean, i don't I mean i see like we've just packed some people to just i mean be in a convoy move up and now for us to see that we have government but there's no government free says i pay even just last i mean uh, monday three days ago eh? do you know the kind of provisions and the things that i sent to my daughter in cape coast Every month, I have to buy provision of 1500 and send it to my daughter. Every month, I have to buy provision and stuff 1500 and send it to my daughter in Cape Coast. There's nothing to, to, to speak about. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think we have a government. The only thing that the Ghanaians are disciplined, okay? So they are managing their life according to their discipline mentality. Apart from that, forget, we don't have government. I can't read them because they, they have they, they don't they don't qualify to be rated. Mr. Speaker, um, as you may be well aware, yesterday you had an occasion to raise some concerns about our approach in terms of language use. I must say that when sitting came to a close, uh, my respected colleague Emmanuel Amakofibo and I met. We had a fruitful discussion regarding the matters in issue. And I think uh, we resolved that things would get far, far better and better and better uh, henceforth. And I believe that the mutual respect that exists between the two of us, proud to he uh, getting his elevation, will remain. Of course, we also realize that both of us were misconstruing uh, certain matters because of some other external 
uh, matters out there unbeknown to us. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to assure you and assure the House that as far as uh, I am concerned, any time I get on my feet, it is for the good of the politics of this House. However, I've taken his concerns on board, and that will guide the approach. So, Mr. Speaker, these are the words I have for you. Uh, for anything that he might have said, uh, touching on my ego character or whatever it is, I have forgiven him and I have let go. We've discussed that and uh, we've taken water of it, over it. We didn't take beer or wine. I'm sure after, after the Lent, uh, we would uh, have a go at uh, a bottle of uh, Coke. Just because the truth is that I have allergies, so Coke is something that I can entertain, not uh, be a minor majority leader is looking at my face. Just because, because he knows we are partners. Don't bring in majority leader. Just because he, just because he wants to talk about face. you and uh, <laughs> the because, So just because that was on a lighter note. Yes. So thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yes. May we hear from the for the wise council yesterday? Indeed, I met the uh, respected honourable Fenyo Maki yesterday. We agreed that we are in uh, here because of the people's business. We can only work together to make sure that we achieve this very important work that has been given to us. And what is required is trust and professionalism. And um, I assured him, as our leader did from the first day, our intention here is to make sure we work, not to obstruct government business, but to make sure we can work together uh, for the people of Ghana. And it is in that spirit that we are going to work. I also uh, told him that, you know, we are in the length period, and uh, if there are things that are said that were offensive, I have... Uh, Things he said that are offensive, I'm forgiving him. <laughs> in fact, and I have, and we move forward together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, <laughs> since 2016. Every second, every hour, every 30 minutes. Since 2016, every minute, I can pay for your mama. I've, I've, I'm yet to talk to both of them. I'm yet to talk to both of them. Should there be any endorsement? Which one will you endorse or you go back? They are all my guys. Fred, I've been with Fred Nyama. Fred Nyama has been my friend since 2012. And Dumelo has been my friend since we became stars. So they are all my guys. So whoever merges as a I mean, candidate for that constituency, as I did for Dumelo last uh, 2020, I'll go there and do the same. John, John, Dumel, John Dumelo won. 2020, John Dumelo won. But no details. No, do they even have MP at all? They do. Since they are voting, they do. I've never heard that there's MP at that constituency. <laughs> Money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I have something like an instant charge. Is being I still waiting in Sunday. I get unbeatable. We should make promo code Dr. Like it. Nigga, 10 pounds, 10 dollars, and now 10 Canadian dollars for the first transaction. Who did send this guy a coffee? Download the Lemonade Finance.
Where that today? You, 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 you. No, we will not know. Uh, <laughs> Um, the National Democratic Congress, the youth wing of the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, decided to come and pay our, um, pay our sympathies to the family of the late Christian Achu. And so that is exactly why we are here today, to come and sympathize with the family, share with them their pain and then condole with them as well. And so um, that is why we are here. Achu was a national asset. He gave all of us many memories in 2015 when Ghana played at the African Cup in Equatorial Guinea. He gave us moments to be proud of as Ghanaians. And so, if today Achu is no more with us, as a young person, we believe that it is not out of place for the youth wing to come and mourn with his family and also express our condolences to the family. And so that is why we are here this morning. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, in terms of support, uh, how has the NDC tried to support with the uh, one week um, um, today we donated 30 cartons of water and then a, a token of 2,000 cities to help the family putting themselves together for the one week observations. I know in due time they will go and inform the leadership of the party. I've been informed by the family that they will go and inform the leadership of the party. And so once that exercise is done, I know the NDC as a party will also come and support the family when it is time for the funeral itself. Someone will say, is this to score a political point or just because it's a national asset? Um, I don't think the NDC is interested in scoring political points over the demise of a national asset. Like I said, anybody who is a football fan and anybody who loves Ghana and follows Ghana anywhere will tell you that Achu was one of our brand ambassadors and Achu was a national asset. Achu in 2015 was voted the best player at the African Cup of Nations. And he gave Ghanaians many delightful moments. Moments that made all of us proud as Ghanaians. So if today such an unfortunate incident has befallen him and anybody decides to come and score political points out of it, then that person is not really a serious person. Then this is not here because of politics. We are here to just mourn with the family and nothing more. It's clear that after eight years, if you pick somebody in the government as your presidential candidate, I mean the party in government, after your eight years, you pick somebody who is also part of the government, then you are not likely to succeed. For a lot of election watchers and persons interested in local politics in Ghana, their eyes will be firmly glued to the two leading political parties in the country. I'm referring to the National Democratic Congress and the New Patriotic Party. This conversation is about one of those um, persons who are eyeing a high office in the incumbent MPP. My name is Eche Atis. Welcome to Election Desk on Ghana Web TV. Our guest is a former member of parliament for Mampo in the Ashanti region, and he's had a lot of spells in engineering. Honorable, please yeah. welcome. Thank you very much. Thank Very you for cheap. allowing us um, into your space. Yeah. So Francis Adenimo is one of the people who are eyeing the seat of flag bearer of the MPP. Honorable, how, how have things been? It's been some two weeks now since you announced your bid to run. Well, just uh, 
a little over a week ago. Okay. Uh, last week, Wednesday, the first of February. Okay. When I held a press conference to communicate to the press and through the press to the good people of Ghana and the world at large, announcing my intention okay. to seek the leadership nomination of the new patriotic party. All right, just for the benefit of our viewers, I want to know who exactly is Francis well, Adenimo? For Adenimo, is basically born in 1965. Mm -hmm and yet to be 58 years uh, from Asante Mampong, where both parents of mine they come from. I had my secondary education at Navrungo, secondary now Navrungo Senior High School for five years for my O level. And from there, I pursued my advanced level education, A level. I don't know whether H.A. you went through that education oh, no, system. Not at all. <laughs> I'm sure you probably went through GHS and SHS. I did. So because of the education reforms. Mm -hmm. And I went for A-level for two years at Kumasi High School. Okay. And then from there to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where I pursued uh, a first degree in civil engineering. And then... Uh, I've been a member of the Ghana Institution of Engineers or Engineering. I'm a corporate member. In terms of education, too, I hold my executive master's degree in public administration. I've also acquired knowledge and skills training from some international inst uh, institutions, including uh, international procurement knowledge from International Law Institute in Washington, mm. uh, pro project and programs management from REPA in the United Kingdom, road asset management from Swedish International Development Agency in Sweden. I've had the opportunity to be trained in emulsified bitumen, which is used for roadworks, okay. uh, for production, for application of that as a road construction material. And so, in terms of working life, I've worked in both construction, road construction industry, and then road consulting firms. And then I've also worked with the Ministry of Roads and Highways before as a civil servant. So it was at the Ministry of Roads and Highways as a civil servant, then I resigned in the year 2008 mm. to contest for the first time to be a member of parliament for Mampong constituency. So I won the primaries in May 2008 and went on to win the general elections of 2008 and entered parliament on the 7th of January 2009. So for two terms, I served the good people of Mampong. Mm. Then 2014, I made my first attempt to seek the leadership nomination of the new patriotic party out of seven contestants, I came in third in that contest. And then after that, we supported our candidate, then now sitting president, Nana Kufuado, and the party won in the 2016 election. It appears you've done nearly everything, your political life and all of that. So now let's, let's just come down to the main uh, cracks of the issues. Now you want back in the race. Why now? Well, this is an ambition that was based on my personal conviction. And my first attempt was in 2014. And you know, in life, you make progress. Mm. And that ambition has not been truncated. So if the opportunity has come for 2023, the new patriotic party will search or look or elect a new person to lead the party for 2024 elections. Once I have not truncated my ambition, I need to put myself forward. You believe it's the right time? Well, the timing cannot be uh, more than now. In any case, in 2014, I was 49 years when I made my first attempt. Okay. And in interacting with the rank and file of the party in 2014, they saw the potential in me and some encouraged me that 
even 2040, if I was not successful, I should consider that in the near in the future, I will still have the opportunity to lead the party. So we move on. Okay. It's not a step by step. And so if this year, which will be a competitive elections to be run by the party. And let me let me uh, let you know that after 2014, the party has not held any competitive presidential primaries because the sitting president won mm -hmm. and then 2020 he had to run on the polls on the ticket of the party. So almost eight to nine years now, we are now going to have another competitive elections in the party. It's interesting you mentioned that because um, as you are well aware, well aware, there are a number of faces, names that have come up who are also interested in this same position. How well do you see yourself uh, in terms of performance? Well, how well would I see myself in terms of performance? When because there are a lot of big names, actually. Big names do not win elections. Elections are won by your character, by your good self, and daring yourself to the electorate, articulating your vision, and they having the acceptability for you that you could be, and you are able, qualified to be their leader. Not necessarily any name as such. Mm. And so, the similarly, in 2014, when the seven contestants that I was one of them, I was seen to be the underdog. I was seen to be somebody unknown in the political environment of our country. The other six contestants had all worked under J. Kufo's administration, either as ministers of state or deputy ministers of state. And I didn't even have not been in that position before. Mm -hmm. But when we went through that process in 2014, I came in third, which was an enviable position that I secured for myself. And that shows the potential that the MPP delegate found in me and then encouraged me to make progress with this ambition. So currently, uh, we are all expressing interest to seek the leadership nomination. Mm. The race itself has not begun. Sure. It will officially begin when the party opens nomination. And then one is able to pick the nomination form, complete it with all the supporting documents that it may be required by the party, together with the prescribed filing fee. Once you submit all these things, then you are in the race. Mm. And for, so for now, I'm sure you are also hearing names that may contest. Yeah. But it could surprise you that at the opening of nomination, some of the names that you may have in mind may decline not to contest because conditions every day in every day are conditions are changing. Now I am championing the cause of a new face okay. for the party. Why do I say so? Since 1993, it has been an eight year cycle between MPP and NDC. NDC had their first eight years under Jerry Rawlings as their leader and president of the Republic. In the year 2000, we had Professor Mills as a sitting vice president. Mm. He became the candidate for NDC, the presidential candidate, but he could not bring the eight because he was part of the government. He was in the government as a sitting vice president. So he couldn't break the eight. Then in 2008, under J. Kufour led administration of MPP government, the current president, Nanado, was a minister in J. Kufour's administration. He also became the candidate, the presidential candidate for the MPP in 2008. He was part of J. Kufour's administration at that time. He also could not break the eight. Mm. Then 2016, which is the latest one, you had um, Mr. John Dramani Mahama as a sitting president 
with NDC eight years, his effort to break the eight, he couldn't make it. So you're drawing all of these on a pattern? Yes, of course. And that is clear. And it is clear that after eight years, if you pick somebody in the government as your presidential candidate, I mean the party in government after your eight years, you pick somebody who is also part of the government, then you are not likely to succeed. But be that win. as it may, the MPP seems like a very unpopular party right now. Well, Don't you agree? No, I do not agree with you. Maybe some people may be disgruntled. Some may be unhappy. Okay? Some, the appeal may have declined. But it doesn't mean that it is unpopular. Okay? You don't agree because it's unpopular? The, no, the party is made up of individuals. We are all party members. I'm a party member. Okay. And so our base as a party still remains. And usually it is the, what we call the undecided voters or the floating voters that we want to appeal to because by your own base, you may not be able to secure the 50% plus one to mm -hmm. win the general elections. Then you need to stretch your hands and appeal to the un undecided voters or the floating voters. And so, if one wants to make a claim that the party is unpopular, you may be dissatisfied with the character and behavior or performance of one or two or three people in government. But to make a general conclusion that the party is unpopular, I beg to disagree. Mm. Because uh, it, is, it wouldn't be all the people in the party. It wouldn't be all party members whom that you or other people may be dissatisfied with. And that is why I say that it is not appropriate to describe that the party is unpopular. Maybe the behavior, the character, the performance of some personalities in the party at the moment may not be satisfactory. Let's have a scorecard. Let's mark the MPP mm -hmm. on a scale of one to 10. Where would you put the party? In terms of what? You well, know, generally, if you want to score, you must have your criteria. Maybe we can start from the economy, on the economy. Score the MPP. Well, I mean, it's, it will not be prudent on my part to give a score between, from zero to 10, honestly. It, it, it will not be appropriate Maybe let's for move away from the economy. How about on the delivery of promises? But the, the, of course, we are experiencing difficult times in the economy. I agree. We are experiencing difficult times because of the level of indebtedness mm. that we have, both external and domestic. And government is taking the steps to see how the economy can improve by the microeconomic indicators in terms of interest rate, inflation, the exchange rate, how we can achieve stability mm -hmm. on all these microeconomic indicators so that the happiness of citizens can be fully restored. Yes, we are experiencing these challenges. Now, government is dealing with the debt exchange program. We're talking about some haircuts here and there, you know. So all this approach is intended to restore the confidence back into the economy and to stabilize the economy with all these indicators. And it is possible that it will take a year or a, a little over a year to see some signs of recovery. Mm -hmm. Okay, to see some signs of recovery. And I also believe that once government also prudently looks at the expenditure, the expenditure side of the budget equation and then be able to cut down on some expenditures that may not be necessary for government, it will also help to cushion the liquidity of the country for our ability to service our debt and still have sufficient funds for our investment project. Let me hold you right there. When we return, I would, I would pick a conversation right from here. We are speaking to um, Honorable Francis Adenimo.
was still here with Honorable Francis Adem, who is um, seeking the nod of delegates of the NPP to become their flag bearer. Honorable, before we took those messages, you were actually talking about cutting down expenditure, unnecessary expenditure. There's also the issue of the DDEP and all of that. Uh, what do you say about what's happening now? The government asking people to more or less enjoy all these haircuts and things like that, yet yeah. itself as a government is not taking a lot of the forefront during these fairs. What do, what do you say about yes. that? Eche, there's a problem. And the problem is that our debt is not sustainable. We are using about 70% of our domestic revenue to service our debt. So how much is remaining to pay for compensation? How much is remaining to pay for other government services and statutory payments? Then how much will remain for you to undertake investment projects in terms of infrastructure, roads, schools, hospitals, you know, and then even the ability to feed yourself. So currently we have a problem. I do not want us to focus our attention on what I will put in quote, Nahu Kosam. At this stage, where there's a problem, you look for a solution to the problem. Then when the solution is secured or is found, then we can come back home and ask ourselves who is a causative agent mm. or who caused that. And then once we identify who caused that, then we can see that we are prescribing this punishment for you. We have a debt on our neck. Our economy is in distress. It's in crisis. We are seeking $3 billion loan, concessionary loan from IMF. The IMF money is not going to be free. All. Because we are a member country of IMF, that is why we are getting it at that low interest rate. But it is repayable. But the IMF also wants to make sure that by extending that credit facility to Ghana, we have the ability to pay it back at the appropriate time. So they are saying that, look, look at the level of your debt. Do something about it. Let's see how the program you have to contain your debt, sustain it, be servicing it, whilst you take on board to our money, and still you'll be able to service that money at the appropriate time when it is due. The best thing in my view to do is to engage citizens. And I'll give for the benefit of viewers and listeners an incident, the situation that happened in Germany. At that time, we had West Germany and East Germany. When the Berlin Wall was broken and the unification came, mm -hmm. West Germany was more developed than East Germany. So there was this differential. Then the chancellor at that time came up and said, look, those from the West, the East guys are our brothers and sisters. We need to help to develop the East as well. So let every individual make a contribution for the development of the East German portion of the entire unified Germany. And by the engagement, the citizens of West Germany accepted that we are now one country. Let us help one another. And they all made contributions to support the work of the government. And today, if you go to Germany, the East portion or East side of Germany even as modern infrastructure, more than the West part of Germany as at that time today. To relate it to our country, we have a problem. Let's look for the solution. What I will admonish the Kufuado led government is to that they should engage people. They should put the figures down. I know pensioners who have invested their pensions in bonds are so dissatisfied and they said they will not participate in the debt exchange program. 
because some say you won't pay me until 10 years mm. even my coupon that should be paid maybe twice a year you are also going to reduce the rate for me and my principal will be in 10 years by 10 years will i be alive or not these are genuine concerns that they have all expressed but granted we also have a problem so the admonishment goes to government for government to put the figures down this is the, the total number of pensioners who have invested their pensions in bonds the total number is this the quantum of their investment is so much if we have to pay this pay that we are unable the spreadsheet will indicate and then then the government can decide let us perform some iteration we vary this we vary that we vary that whilst you government you are doing that check your expenditure side maybe the president can decide to issue a directive that henceforth apart from the president maybe the chief of staff and the executive secretary to the president the speaker of parliament and the clerk of parliament and then the chief justice and the judicial secretary and the vice president and his secretary no government official should travel outside the country on board business class everybody traveling as a public official on government business we should travel economy no that directive can be issued if you are a minister of state and you you are going outside the country on uh, government business why can't you also uh, sit in economic class in the airplane you know it will also be cutting it's part of cutting down the government expenditure maybe expenses on fuel we should need to look at expenses on fuel can we reduce so that you encourage all public officials or appointees government appointees to use saloon cars whilst they are in what in in the capital city of ghana and working if they have to trek to other parts of the country then they can have access to their um, cross-country vehicles the v8 and then travel it's, it's very clear the, these things are things that administratively yeah. it can be done sure it can be done but these are things you can do sure absolutely now, now and it's they are clear part of the things that i have in my mind that is why last week when i announced my intention mm -hmm. and within my speech one of the areas i said was how we would improve on our public service delivery and therefore we will not go into the usual business of incremental budgeting now is the time for us to do budgeting from first principles if a, a, a state institution you have computers laptops or office equipment or office uh, furniture and they are just a year two years three years and they are still in good use why would you want to continue to purchase those items again in the ensuing year because you have budgeted for those things no so we have to look at budgeting from first principles and once we do all these things administrative expenses can be lowered then it comes to public procurement procurement of um, 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 contracts especially the large value contracts where you have to allow for competition because where there is competition then you can be sure that you will achieve quality and achieve value for money because all players in the game, everybody is now going to the drawing board to be very competitive in pricing, in all the proposals, the technical and the financial proposals that they will submit for the job that they have been asked to tender for. Mm. Let, me, let, me, let me allow you to also get us into your, your bigger picture of what you want to do for the country. You've already painted a very gloomy, sort of gloomy situation of what it looks like now what exactly is the message you'll be selling to Ghanaians okay. and then and then we can look at how how much of in the my campaign speech, is going on actually in my speech of last week first February mm. in which I will share uh, copies with you I outline seven point policy development program mm. 
for our country under my watch. My team, my good self, we have, we, we have studied the situation and have developed the seven point. There is an if point, but that one is reserved until I secure the north. And then once we are into the competition, the campaign competition with our, uh, our competitors next year, then I will share that eighth point. So the eight is the game changer? Yeah, that is, is, is that it's going is to be tied pass. to the breaking the eight? Mm, well, the breaking the eight has three basic conditions that need to be satisfied. The unity within the party itself must be strengthened so that we maximize our efforts. Then the government performance is also key you know, to help the party to break the eight. And then the third condition is the face who will lead the party to be able to break the eight. But on my seven-point policy development plan, the first one is on agriculture. And as a country, we should be able to feed ourselves. We should be able to provide our carbohydrate needs, our protein needs, and then our minerals and vitamin needs as a nation. And all this we can do. For carbohydrate, we know is a cereals, maize, millet, rice, name the rest of the cereals. Mm. We also know the protein, livestock, poultry, fish. We should be able to do all this, to be able to feed ourselves. Then vegetables and fruits. So the policy is that no Ghanaian should go to bed, go to school, go to work hungry. And we can do that on our own. To achieve that, yes, we must look at agriculture and food sufficiency and security. So that is the first point. The second point, having eaten and you are satisfied as a human being, you are concerned with your education and your health. So the two, the second and the third can be education and health or health and education because they are all social sectors of our economy. You need to develop, you need to go to school. And in terms of our education, technical, vocational, and skills training will be key under my watch. I'm tempted to just ask a follow-up question just on this. We know how many times politicians have invested in education and health in particular, but it doesn't seem like the same politicians want to be part of that system. Their children don't school in the same schools. The politicians don't use those health facilities. So we need to reverse it. How do because we do if that? You, if you come up with that policy, then you must believe in it. You must believe in it. And leadership is by example. Okay? So for now, we are pursuing free senior high school education, which in my opinion is very fantastic policy. So every child, right from kindergarten or nursery through kindergarten through basic education primary ghs you should end up at least at their senior high school level mm. and that is good so it is for government to improve on the quality of the educational institutions so that all of us i should find my children provided i have children who are still young to go to school and for in this particular case I do not have my kids have all completed <laughs> and tertiary institutions. Okay. But everybody should be encouraged. Because if you are introducing a system and you cannot participate, then it means you don't believe in it. You must believe in it, participate in it, because it's leadership by example. Send him a cup from lemon and fun.
Jonas, while Brian did a shame and let me do pounds. Lemonade finance. Sis, they send their money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I am something like an instant charge. Spin. I still wait in this year. And you're on. We should be promo code Dr. Like it. Nigga, ten pound, ten dollars, and a ten Canadian dollars for a first transaction. Who just send this guy a coffee? You know, download the Lemonade Finance. Ghana football needs a complete overhauling. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? First minister should pack some place. He should pack some place. Why? He doesn't. He doesn't know anything about football. Hello and welcome to Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafio. Today our guest is someone who has years of experience when it comes to football in Ghana. With the current state of football in Ghana, our guest will help us understand what he thinks about the current state of football in Ghana. He's a seasoned and a renowned football administrator. We're taking a short break and when we return, we'll start the conversation. Welcome from the break. My name is Joseph Adamafi and you're watching Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. I'll let my guest introduce himself. Sir, you're welcome to Sports Check. My guest would definitely like to know who you are. Uh, the name is Nana Fitz. Nana Fitz, okay. Fitz. He's a renowned football administrator. And, well, uh, let's zoom in straight into the conversation. Um, a lot has been said about the current state of Ghana football lately with regards to our performance on the international stage. What do you think is wrong with the Ghana football? Football in this country, to me, does not even exist. Why? Oh, because you see the current uh, form of uh, the football administrators and then what is happening to football and this and that. It's nothing to write home about. But yeah. there have been others who say that we've been able to qualify for the World Cup. It's Black Stars under 20 uh, women's World Cup to we were there. I don't want to. I don't want you to say others saying that you, you know, that's where the problem is. You know, football is a game, and it ends at at the end of the tournament when you are finished. When you say that we have qualified for, at what cost? Is it right? the way we went through it. What happened that we only qualified and we didn't go further than that? You know, that's where we have to start from. There is something definitely wrong with Ghana football. Do you understand what I'm saying? Something wrong with Ghana football now. Now, my experience, I'm not a little boy. Me, I was around when uh, Ohijan was around. I've seen a lot of football administrators. I've seen a lot of the way football has been running in this country. You see, it's different now. It's much different now. You know, and then the foundation of foot Ghana football is being run on now. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to write home about. We need a complete overhauling before you can even talk to me about Ghana football. Uh, I would like you to state some of the things you think it, uh, are wrong with Ghana football. Some of the things you think are wrong. Transparency. Accountability. Who is doing what, who is doing what. You see, don't forget that football yesterday, 90% of Ghana football uh, uh, fans, we should say, did not even understand the difference between running a club the blasters and now this. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, blaster belongs to us. It belongs to you, me, the man standing there, the people on the street, and everybody. That's who owns the blasters. 
you see. So the respect that we need for the people who are handling, there's a difference between owning and handling. The people who are handling the blasters, the respect that they should give us, they are not giving us. It's only respect, accountability, and transparency. That's all. People want to know how their money is being spent, who is spending it, and why. And I don't think these people, they are ready to do that. How do you think the money was spent wisely? Looking at the report that has been coming out that uh, players took 100,000, some other people on the um, some higher authority in football were also paid the same amount of money. If it's true, if it's true that that's what went on, I think the people who took the money and the people who gave the money should buy their heads down in shame. You know, they shouldn't have done that to start with, if it's true. The reason I'm saying that is, look, we gave you the money, you took the money, everybody knows that you took the money from the government, taxpayers' money. And if you know or you think that you did the right thing there or you are doing the right thing here, all we are asking for is the money that was given to you, nobody is saying that anybody has chopped any money or anybody has done anything. All we are saying right now is the money that you took, please account. You know, come and make an account to us, to the owners of the national team. That's the public, the taxpayers. Is it a crime? Is think, it a crime to ask that question? I don't think so. So if they know they did the right thing and the money was spent properly, come and then account for. Let's set up a complete uh, uh, independent uh, commission. You know, they sit down with auditors. And then you tell them how the money was used. And I don't think if you do that, anything will, any talk, 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 talk will come. But until that one is there, Ghana of yesterday, when football is concerned, so far as football is concerned, it's not like Ghana of today. Ghana of today, we are hip. We are, we are opening our eyes. We want to see where every penny went. You don't come and tell me that uh, you took me to a uh, World Cup. So we should be quiet at but what cost? They have also said that they are going to invest some of the money in the um, renovation of the Kanaman Soccer Center of Excellence. They should put this thing on paper. Is that too much for anybody to ask? You have the accounts there, accounts department, you have the, uh, the president, you have the vice, you have the committee, you have the management committee, you have them all there. How long will it take for you to give us a respect. That's what we are asking for, respect. Do you understand what I'm saying? Respect. Give us respect. Just come out and say that the money that I took to, uh, or when we went to the World Cup, this is how much money it cost us. Mm. This is how much taxpayers' money that it cost us. And this is the breakdown. Is it too much for us? Uh, yeah. Why is it difficult for us to go around this and people are fighting and then they are threatening to go to court and they are doing this thing? All we are asking for is come out and tell us. Well, with regards to the blasters, there have been other concerns of the public saying that uh, there is some form of um, influence from some top football uh, administrators to bring some players or influence coaches to... Uh, favor some players in the national team. I guess you've heard about it. What are yeah. your impressions? Being uh, someone who has worked over the years with the likes of Oini Jan, was there something like that in the past? No. No. Because those days, we didn't have this kind of FIFA rules. We didn't have this kind of uh, the, uh, the days, the days. No, we didn't have that. Kwame Nkrumah, that time he was responsible for sports. Kwame Nkrumah, Minister of Sports. You see, and he appointed Ojini Jan as a director. Not as a minister, not as a director of sports. Single-handed, take care of Ghana sports. And because there was some truth, you know, because that time there was nothing like lying about it. And you didn't hear all this. Everything went on smoothly. And there weren't cops. I remember I used to pray for Cornerstones. When we traveled from Kumasi, Accra, Kumasi, Takradi, wherever we go, 
we have some reps at all the centers. So Saturdays and Sundays, the schools are closed. So the players will go and sleep there on the table. table. You put the table together and you sleep on it. Don't ask me about pillow because we didn't have it. They give you only blanket. And they want cups. But look at now. We are paying these bonuses, uh, the, uh, the allowances, the man man management committee, the wine, the wine. If you put the management committee, if it's true that they took 100,000, taxpayers, please listen to me. If it is true that they took 100,000, if you convert 100,000 to CDs nowadays, do you know how much? About 13 billion old CDs. Me, I'm a whole guy, so I'll talk about old CDs. But 13 billion for about six people. You know, it doesn't include the plane fare. It doesn't include the bonuses, uh, the pay diems that they were taking. It doesn't include the hotels. It doesn't include the uh, food that they ate and all these things. No. Cash to them is about 13 billion. At this time, Ghana, we, we, are, find, we are finding it very difficult to pay uh, nurses, doctors, teachers uh, to take care of petrol, to take care of this. And you look at God, we all serve, believe in, and say that I'm giving them this amount. For what? For what? You know, for what? But and when you come, when they, you know, when they came back, all we are saying, nobody is saying that you have misused money. Well, they say, tell us. You see, right now, you cannot run away from the fact that if you listen to radio, if you listen to us, if you listen to somebody, some people are saying that uh, uh, it's not true. Some people are saying, some people are. So who's going to put it to rest? Uh, let me ask you this question. If you had won the World Cup and the management members had taken the 100,000, would it have been you see, good? It does not fascinate me. Me, I believe in total justice. You know, I believe in total justice. Master, all we are saying is we are not talking about winning, losing. Ah, so when you talk about losing, yeah, we were the most, uh, friends said, uh, they were most, uh, 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 help me with the adjective that I want to mm -hmm. use. We are mo the most... Uh, lowest rank. Company. Okay, lowest team. And how much did it cost us? And we are saying that, look, it's a privilege for us to have chance to go to a uh, World Cup. We did well by going to World Cup and so, 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 so. We are saying that the money it took, was it enough? How did they spend it? Do we have to go to court on this? Well, we'll come to that, but let's uh, take a short break and when we return, we'll continue with the conversation. You're watching Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafio. Welcome back from the break. You are watching Sports Check here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Joseph Adamafi. My guest today is a renowned football administrator, Nana Fitz. We're talking about the current state of Ghana football. Um, so, what do you think about um, the Ghana Premier League? Have we come far to uh, lower our standards or you think we are doing well? We are descending 380 miles per hour, going down. You know it, and I know everybody knows it. Right now, we've been having difficulties to get people to go and watch matches. Back then, how were uh, the past of club and football? Look, creators? when they say Kotoko, when they say Kotoko and Haas are playing, or Kotoko and Dwarfs, Kotoko and any team, when they say they are playing, Haas and any team, any teams they are playing now, if you are not at the stadium around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you will not get a place to sit. Because the people love the game, they understood the game, and then they knew that it was they went and went watch a, a genuine football. It's not like today. What do you see? A player playing football, he turn around, and, you know, and score his own goal and say that uh, I did that because I'm protesting. 
that the top people are betting. They are using it to bet. They are making, you know, when these things come out, do you think anybody will go and pay money to go and watch? Why don't we tell them the truth? We know why they are not, we know why it's like that. We know it. Everybody knows it. You know why people have lost interest. There was a time blasters, they were praying in Cape Coast or something. It came to a point where they have to hire some buses, go to the universities, get them, pay them to come and watch the match. It has never happened before. Never, never happened before. How about officiating in the Ghana Premier League? Officiating is bad. Everybody knows that. You know, uh, because the players are not being paid well, because the owners of the teams, they don't have enough money to keep the boys in shape, to keep the boys, let them know that they are playing, they are working. You know, all these things. We say we'll talk about the negative, we'll say a lot, but what do you think should be the solution? For what the I think should be a solution is very, very simple. Accountability. And let the money go where it's supposed to go. You know, right now we have a lot of people are blaming the government for, oh, we don't have stadium. Oh, and then the stadium is bad. They have turned off the lights uh, at Cape Coast, uh, Cape Coast uh, Stadium. uh, stadiums. They have done this, they have done this. And then you go. You take people's money to go to the World Cup to go and buy disgrace. Do you understand what I'm saying? To buy disgrace. The money that we took, we didn't go to do anything. We go and bought a disgrace. Because yeah, we, yeah, we. we won one match. One match. You see? So this money that you brought, the balance, and then the 100,000 that you give to people, if it's true, that they took 100,000, how do you justify it? We are praying some players are taking 400 Ghana a month, 300 Ghana a month, the players who are praying here. So do you think the money from the World Cup should be invested into the Ghana Premier League? That's what FIFA says. When they give money now, they don't give money and say that uh, the top people should sit down and then uh, they do whatever they want to do with it. No, they don't say that. So how should the money be invested? Should the uh, uh, prize money for the winners of the Ghana Premier League be increased? Should players be paid a particular amount of money? I want to know how we can do things to boost uh, the Ghana Premier League and make sure it returns to where it used to be. You see, uh, you cannot, when it comes to the salaries of the players, you cannot give them a, a ceiling. Oh, you can, you can, yeah. You can tell them that nobody should pay a player less than, say, uh, 200, 300, whatever. You know, but you can't pay, tell them that this one should get 200, everybody should get 200. No, it does not work like that. Even in Europe, it does not work like that. The first solution will be Ghana football should be put on ice now you know because it's not going well everybody knows that and it's from the top to the bottom so we should put in a, a, a put the whole thing on the ice freeze it and reorganize it complete overhauling anything less than that you know it's not going to work you know it's not going to work um, back in the days, we saw CK Jemfi and the likes of other great players uh, play a number of years in Ghana before they got their breakthrough to go and play abroad. Do you think uh, player um, exodus is one of the reasons for uh, the Ghana Premier League not being exciting? Because today you go to the Accra Sports Stadium, you go to any match venue, you go there, you hear of this particular player, he excites you. Tomorrow they said, he has been transferred to another uh, club outside Ghana. You see, those days, it, happened, it didn't happen like that. There was nothing like that. The uh, Ohijan formed Republicans, and they had top-class footballers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Top-class footballers. And they were playing top-class football. You see, so it didn't even... Osekofi went to London some time ago. And they saw Sekofi was good, was this. They were going to do it. They were going to give him more money, uh, big money to say. He said, no, I love Kotoko. So I'm coming back. I didn't go. Because Kotoko, at least, he loved them. They can't play like Europeans, but they pay him enough. They give him enough for him to stay. But here you give somebody 500, 400, 200 a month. And they come and say, come and take $300. Will he go? You can't stop it. The only way you can stop it is treat them well. Let's see where the monies go. 
And if it goes someplace that we don't like, at least we can, you know, we can come up and say that, no, this place should have gone there. He don't say that because I'm running football. So I'm the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. That's communist. That's by force. You don't f do football like that. Football should be supposed to be a very interesting game. Everybody should be happy. The supporters, the fans, the players, the, uh, the technical team, the, everybody should be happy. Why would you give anybody 100,000? That's for the five or six people. Imagine, imagine how about the top? How much did you get? And they say, come and account. Nobody is saying, I have never said that anybody has chopped any money. You see? How, this uh, how will you read um, the current GFE in a, on a scale of 1 to 10? This, this question, forgive me. Because if I say it, it will be... It will be no, uh, forgive me. I don't want to say it. But have they done well? Qualifying Ghana to the World Cup. We are about to have... Master, people keep on saying we qualify Ghana to World Cup. We qualify Ghana to World Cup. How many teams were they looking for in Africa? And how much did it cost us? Qualify people today, you know... Uh, Master, it's no big deal. If you have uh, if, uh, free money, unaccountable interest to work with. So My mother could have done the same thing. So what are we talking about? Uh, qualify Ghana to World Cup, Ghana for, at what cost? And we are saying that, yeah, you went. That's on the end of it. Somebody pushed you to go. So the person who helped you to go, come and account for it. That's what we are saying. So for you, they've not done what the GFA have done. Oh, no, no, I don't, think, uh, I don't think they have done it. Look, I was around when Ben Kofi was there. I was around when Elias Day, all of them. I was around when Kati Siza, SK Menu, all the, I saw all of them. And when they traveled, they bring change. Don't even let us go too far. Bring coffee. They give me money. FA travels. He come back and say, this is how much I spend. This is what I get. It never happened before. What's so difficult about that? Mm -hmm. we tell, you want to tell us? My brother, Ghana football needs a complete overhauling. But this case, if you allow this case to go on like it's going on now, on check, Ghana football is going to be like a place where if you need money, you hustle, you go there, you become rich. And that, so because it's unaccountable in press. The money that goes there, nobody, nobody knows how the money is being spent. Nobody, they're not going to tell anybody. So where is the money? This, this, at this time that we are, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. The only way that Ghanaians will be satisfied won't talk. It's forget the past. It has happened, it's gone. But it's still, they are still repeating it. They should come out, allow themselves to be uh, audit, right? audited, right? Audited. Yes. Allow themselves to be audited. Tell us how much. Transparency from now on, transparency. And then the big monies, the 100,000, they should bear their heads down in shame. At this time of the game, Ah, yeah, um, no. it's Ghana football in the right hands. No, 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 it's not in the right hands. You know that. Why are you asking me that question? <laughs> I don't why know. Are you, why are you asking me that question? You know it's not in the right hands. So why are you asking me? You know, these are, these are some of the things that is happening in Ghana football. A lot of people are afraid. I'm not saying they go and lie. God forbid, I will never do that. I don't even, I don't even want anybody to do that. Don't lie on somebody. But what is happening in Ghana football now? The if, what they call them, Eco, and now Eco, and now Yoko. Yoko, is that what they call them? Yeah, yeah. They should come in. Me, I want the parliamentarians, Jesus Christ, listen to me carefully. I want the parliamentarians to come in at this time. Because when they were about to leave, uh, the sports people, the people who have chance to talk on radio, administrators, all of them were saying that when well, you were going to take the money, at least you told the public that you did the money, you have mm -hmm. sent the, uh, uh, the budget. budget to the government and then the government. So when you took the money, we are asking you, oh, it's good that government are giving the money. How much did they give you? It took the intervention, intervention of the parliamentarians to straighten it up, right? Because the minister said, and nobody has any power to talk. 
But what about the sports minister? <laughs> He's also over the... The can... sports minister should pack some place. He should pack some place. Why? He doesn't, he doesn't know anything about football. The sports minister does not know anything about football. Because look at what is happening. My, friend, my brother. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you are not my brother. You are mm -hmm. my son. Mm -hmm. eh? Yes. Look at what is happening. And you're asking about... Uh, is it not the same sports minister who took the budget and presented it to the government? It is the same go, uh, uh, minister who came out to say that uh, when we come back, I'm not going to tell anybody how much you are going to spend, how much money was given to Yekoba. When they came back, why don't the same place that he went and told the whole world, why don't you, him just take uh, the budget? Do a budget, Keke. No budget. Do uh, how you spend the money. And the minister is still not sitting there. So you think he's... Um... Was he not aware that they were paying 100,000, 100,000? Was he not aware of that? Probably, maybe the president will set over the years. Was he not pay. around when the money was being paid? Was he not around? You asked me a question. I'm asking a very simple question. I'm sure he was. Thank you very much. What did he say? What has he done? The government, as at now, me personally, I want to appeal... To the, uh, to the parliamentarians that we should not let this thing die because anything happens today and nobody says anything tomorrow it will happen i know your concern has to do with the money aspect. what about the coaching aspect of the blasters since uh, the current gfa came in they came to meet um coach You see up here, he went, Siki Akono, Milovan Rajivak, now Utuado has left four coaches under one ten. <laughs> now we're about to appoint our fifth coach. Why do we want to sit down, you know, and allow the same people within the short time that they've been in office to appoint what? Four coaches. Dismiss all of them. Not even one of them were given the handshake that uh, at the time of your office where the, all of them were sacked. Otoado resign himself. Yeah. And then you, the same person, we are giving you a chance to go and appoint another coach. Me, I see it. From my experience, I see that Akosapia is qualified. There's nothing wrong with Akosapia. But you see, they sack Akosapia. On what grounds did they sack Akosapia? You see, on what grounds, what did he do? Now, Akosapia says, I want to come back. Okay. That didn't mean that he has gone to ratify uh, the mistakes or, you know, what, you know why, why, is he want, why does he want to come back? Because he feels that injustice somewhere was made. That's why he wants to come back. He wants to call them rough. If you want to dismiss me, dismiss me, give the people the reason why I was dismissed. It's, it's as simple as that. Look, my friend, all this thing that we are doing, I'm saying it again. Ghana football needs a complete overhauling. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, I understand you, but do you think if we don't take care, we'll return to um, Nyantechi's era again? <laughs> we are there. We are past them. What are you talking about? We are past them. <laughs> really? Oh, my friend. Look, I'm telling you, I was part, and I always feel ashamed. Some people even reported that I lied. No, no, I didn't lie. When, when they say that the government should allow uh, non-government people, civilians, to run it, I was part of the people who were making noise. No, no, I'm part. And then they changed. If I knew it was going to be like this, sir, at least I would have added my voice. I would have been first to say that, no, let it stay there. Right now, football stinks. Do you understand? What does it mean? Stink. What does it mean? Thank you very much. That's exactly the position that we are in now. There's absolutely nothing you can do until a complete revolution. Not that somebody takes a gun, not that somebody takes a pistol, not that. Complete revolution means complete overhauling. Let's put ice. If I have a power and I'm in a place where I can make a decision, this African Cup and all these things, you know, you know because the same people are going and they come back, how much are they going to share this time? 
taxation without representation. Unaccountable impress. They are going now. Again, no. They are going. They will take another budget to go. 40 years without AFCON. Yeah. I'm sure you've definitely seen Ghana win AFCON before. And uh, definitely, it didn't cost as much to go and win no. AFCON. No, 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 no. No, it's very easy. Eh? Masa, CK Jenfis, the he formed uh, uh, Republicans. The coach now, he's here. Every month he takes his pay. Now, we play matches, like Basta will play matches three, three times a year, three, four times a year, something. And 90% of them are from abroad. So when he leaves and go, what does he do? What does the coach do? What does the coach do? But he takes, he takes pay. I don't have any problem. But coach, you are here, you sleep in the house free. They give you a uh, car free, petrol free, uh, per diem when you travel, you sleep in a hotel free. So why don't you, for sake, you go out like weekend? Oh, Team A is playing Team B here. I'm going to watch it. You know, do some scouting. Football is not an easy game. Right now, football used to be a game. Right now, football, you, it, football is business, big business. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Big business. So we can't sit down here and uh, uh, go about this shit about uh, I'm doing it. I'm, you know, no, 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 no. They don't play football like that. Football is business. And Thai Spay is Yesika. Sika Kudi. Do you understand? Money. That's why we are talking. That's why some of us, we are saying, I cannot say this thing about House of Folk. I can't say about uh, Kotoko. I can't say about Duas. I can't say about any team. Because my money is not in there. We are talking, all of us, we are busy talking about blasters because our investment is there. Thank you, Nana Faith, for this interesting conversation. I'm sure you've sent your word out there, and definitely the people that matter in football who uh, get talking and also demand some um, accountability, as you said, for uh, the monies that were spent at the World Cup and all that matters. My name is Joseph Adamafi, and that's how we wrap up here on Sports Check here on Canal Web TV. Thanks for watching. Money back home from UK, Canada, and now US. I have something that you instant charge is being as thing waiting in Sunday. And you're unbeatable. We should be promo code Dr. Like it. Make 10 pounds, 10 dollars, and 10 Canadian dollars. The first transaction with the Sandy's Gaka Coffee. Download to Lemonade Finance. Thank you.